Good evening. Um, it's seven o'clock, and um, um, we can start the meeting. Um, I'd like to uh, to ask uh, Pastor Jason Hooper for uh, to give us the opening prayer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight, um, first of all, we come before you uh, with heavy hearts as we continue to uh, remember and mourn the loss of Queen Elizabeth II. And Lord, we just ask and pray your blessing upon her family and her citizens, and that in the days and in the weeks ahead that you will just grant them your compassion and peace. We are grateful tonight for our time together here. We, we are grateful for our town and its citizens. We pray for them and we pray your continued prosperity, protection and peace for them. We are grateful for our mayor, our council, our staff. And we pray your blessing upon them even tonight as they lead. May all things be done orderly and for your glory we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Hooper. Uh, and at uh, this point, uh, I'm going to follow up uh, on, on what Pastor Hooper introduces uh, and uh, ask everybody to actually stand up and have a, a one-minute silence for the passing of our queen. You may be seated. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to approve the agenda. Any second? Oh, a second. Any favor? Oh, uh, item number four, uh, approval of um, minutes of previous council meetings, starting with special meeting of council, July 11, 2022. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the special meeting of council for July the 11th, 2022. Any favor? Aye. And the second is the approval of meetings for regular meeting of council of August 8, 2022. Uh, motion, please. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the regular council meeting of August the 8th, 2022. Second. Any favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, closed meeting of council, August 17, 2022. Um, Go ahead, Nancy. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of council closed meeting of uh, August 17th, 2022. I'll second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, finally, the special meeting of council, August 31st, 2022. Aye. I second it. Anyone in favor? Aye. Uh, conflict of interest declarations. Anyone has any conflict to declare? No conflict declared. I move on to item six in the agenda, delegations. And your... Uh, Talk to us about the alumni event for 2023. It's not here. Uh, we can, may have to uh, defer that for later on. Uh, moving on to general reports, general government report. Uh, Jason. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, 
<clears throat> General government report for the month of August, month, month of, uh, for September regular meeting. Uh, we've, uh, with the passing of uh, Her Majesty, Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, we've entered a 10 day mourning period. Flags are at half mass and a book of condolence has been set up for residents uh, and area residents to sign at the town hall. And uh, we put up a number of uh, British flags on the main street as well. Canal Beach, uh, much of the work at Canal Beach has uh, stalled as we're waiting for a power hookup plan to be submitted to NV Power. Um, interior carpentry, plumbing, electrical work remains uh, as um, the building has been built, but just that work remains. And uh, a sidewalk as well around the building. Some of the finished work around the parking lot is, is, uh, is pending as well. Industrial park expansion. Um, we're seeking to determine a, uh, a determination on the co town cost, uh, which is about 6.67% uh, of the total, uh, which gives a dollar amount of $40,000 and $20. Uh, we've had some discussions with RDC and ACOA um, and um, also being also discussion on possible uh, municipal ent entity being established uh, for industrial parks, so sort of a crown corp. We are looking at something as an option there. Um, Hillcrest subdivision, the uh, the cut, the water line has been repaired. The road uh, has been uh, has been backfilled in, where we will be compacting it in the next couple of weeks, well, next week or so, and uh, have the road paved by the end of this month. Uh, the municipal designated highway plan um, for Mount Pleasant Road. There's a 155 meters of new sidewalk curb and storm drain on the north side and 230 meters of curb and catch basin on the south side. We expect this work to go to tender this week. The, uh, the groundwater under uh, direct influence study with, uh, with our water system, uh, repair work was complete on well three uh, as was brought up in that, that Goody report and the report, the draft version has been submitted to the province. Uh, the Coastal Link walking trail, uh, paving has been completed um, al along with the uh, installation of bollards and barriers. Uh, waypoint signage is expected to be installed this month and uh, it's uh, a lot of use on the walking trail. The Eagle's Nest, over the coming months we intend to address some of the vegetation growth around the Eagle's Nest, uh, the basin boat ramp. Uh, we'll also inspect and repair the stairs uh, which are likely going to be need to be replaced next year. They just have deteriorated. Um, seasonal closures, both the splash pad and Canal Beach are scheduled to close uh, September the, the, third, the 19th, which is next Monday. So it's the final week for both of those, uh, both of those facilities. Uh, development housing, the uh, School Street, Carlton Street apartment con construction has been put on hold due to some rising interest rates, uh, as, the, as the developer stated. So he expects to pick that up in, uh, in early spring. So we'll keep an, keep an eye on that. The lower bridge installation work uh, with approval from the council and it's on agenda for tonight. Um, we did a, have to do an adjustment on the gas tax plan and allocate additional, uh, I think it was $20,000, uh, around 20,500 of gas tax funds towards the work. Uh, the primary reason for that is that uh, we did come over on the, the well number two uh, improvements that we did. So uh, which is about $20,000 short. There's um, I believe there's about twenty or thirty-nine thousand dollars that's remaining in the gas tax account. Uh, Main Street, we're still waiting uh, for some of the large cast iron flower pots, much like the ones we already have on Main Street. Um, they said their delivery should be uh, middle middle of next month, so we won't be using those this year. They'll probably just go straight to storage to be brought out next next year. Uh, resurfacing of the basketball and pickleball courts. This is something that's been just like a, I guess a pickleball or, or a basketball has been thrown back and forth, just trying to find uh, some schedules that work out for both the contractors, uh, Fundy Fencing and uh, Plex uh, Playtech, which is the uh, resurfacer. Both areas have received funding. Uh, we are still hopeful to have the work completed by the end of this month. Uh, if not, the schedule uh, and the schedule closes in, the work will have to be done in, uh, in 2023. So <clears throat> I just met with uh, Fundy Fencing Today, they're, they're pretty optimistic that they'll have uh, everything complete on their end. So we just need to get the, the resurfacing company in by, by the end of the month. Uh, the baseball field, 
town is looking uh, to continue efforts improving the baseball field. Uh, the field has recently uh, become active, even tonight, uh, with the uh, Fundy High varsity team. Um, so they'll be using the field as their as their home home team. Uh, special thanks goes out to Principal uh, Rosemary Southard for taking the lead on improvements. Uh, we've done some earlier improvements, but um, she's taken it uh, an extra mile and done some mowing and. Uh, even uh, even her and some other volunteers have come out and, and done some raking and and uh, and dragging of the field. So we certainly thank thank them for their efforts and uh, and jumping in there. Eastern Charlotte uh, Chamber of Commerce. The chamber will be uh, running the business office upstairs in the town hall, uh, and they'll have that until the end of December. Uh, so dangerous unsightly premises. We still have three open files. Two building uh, uh, two building permit rejection files are as well open as well. Um, and resident complaints, primary complaint that we have received over the last month has been ATVs on the main street. And so once again, uh, we do advise people that they're, despite the fact that there's a proposal uh, with the town from uh, Quad NB, nothing has been approved. So ATVs are not permitted on the town streets. So uh, GNB off-road enforcement was in the town this weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. I'm not sure if they made any stops, but uh, complaints have also been passed on to the RCMP, and so they're aware of the situation. And uh, just a few just other things that are coming up. <clears throat> a uh, national holiday is uh, September the 30th for National Truth and Reconciliation Day, and a uh, the Estad holiday on Thanksgiving, the, um, the 10th. So that's a general government report. Any questions? Some parents have reached out to me regarding the maintenance of the field, and I was just wondering who is, res are we responsible for the maintenance? We are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anything that we can do, because I, because of the complaints, is there anything that we can do between now and say November or December that we can help them? Uh, we are, we are looking at doing a re, like the, you talk about the baseball field, yeah. so we are looking at actually going in and, and adjusting some of the gravel, the infield, uh, to bring back the, the pitching mound, so. You know, we, we weren't really aware that a varsity team was even going to call this home uh, until um, probably late August. Um, so, um, you know, so we, we did have some plans to do some things like we did install foul poles and, um, you know, distant numbers out in the outfield, uh, readjusted some of the fencing. Um, that still has to be done as well, some, some further fencing. But, um, you know, so we're trying to play a little bit of catch up. That's why if people have plans with using. Uh, you know, town infrastructure that we probably need to be brought into the conversation quicker mm -hmm. just to set expectations and uh, it would be great if we could just drop everything we're doing and, and get to a, a, the field and drag it and mow it and everything else. But even late last week we were contending with, um, with you know, making sure the flags were up on, on Main Street and you know, that was uh, not something that we had planned. Any other question? I have... Um, uh, Two points to to to, uh, to raise with what uh, Jason discussed. The first one is um, with regards to the developments for um, uh, the industrial park expansion. Um, we did receive um, confirmation that we can use our general funds to actually do cover our share in our in our. Um, um, engineering study and EA for the expansion. Uh, however, as we discussed pr previously, there is um, a, a new development that uh, in the new entity, industrial parks are going to be covered uh, by the entity. So although the development that we are contemplating in St. George relates to water and sewage, because that development is primarily um, contemplated for the industrial park, there is a great incentive uh, to protect the residents of the town from any risks associated with the development to actually set up a corporation uh, which is going to take care of this development. And that is something that um, uh, the CAO and I have been exploring by talking to St. John that already has set up a corporation for industrial parks. So if we can achieve that and set up a, a framework for an industrial park to handle the expansion, then we managed to actually 
take over the shoulders of our little town, uh, the, the potential risk and cost for the industrial park expansion and share it with a bigger community that's going to get the benefits from this expansion. So I would have liked to actually uh, authorize Jason to spend up to $2,000 on legal fees to explore setting up a corporation. And I would like uh, us to actually um, uh, green light him the, 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 the authority to actually look at that, that thing. Um, so I just wanted to, if, if, if you have any, any thoughts about that. And, uh, Would that be able to be done in the time we have left as a council? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. If it, like, uh, um, essentially, the, 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 the issue is can we set up a vehicle? Uh, because there are people who are eager to proceed with the engineering study and, and the EA um, and not wait for another three or four months. Okay. Until, okay, so if we can set up a vehicle by which, to which we can transfer our share. For this 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 portion, then that's going to become a package that after that is inherited by the larger right. entity. So but it, this it can it, be it, completed before they take over. Right? The, uh, the setup of a corporation, yes. Okay. Okay. okay so okay. Saint John has done it in the 60s, and apparently that corporation is still alive. Okay. So we 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 found a contact, but we have not fully explored it. So uh, I, I just want to actually uh, to actually uh, authorize Jason as he, as as we are progressing. Do not have to wait for another meeting to actually spend thousand or thousand dollars in 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 corporation fees and legal fees and in, to save to save this vehicle. You want Jason to check with whom now to set this corporation up, or yeah, could you explain that just a yes. little bit further? Yes, I I, I I I say that in order to be able to actually take the risk of that development from the limited number of houses that we have in St. George as part of our water and sewage uh, budget, we need to actually try to tie it up to an industrial park venture. And it, to the extent that this, this development ties up to a specific expansion, we can set up a corporation of industrial parks that will take on this project which is not part of the water and sewers of, 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 of St. George, but it's part of the industrial park. So it will be shared by the greater entity that comes up in... in yeah, the, I understand that. It's the $2,000. What did you want? $2,000 buys you uh, a, a lawyer who's going to do the incorporation and, 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 and set up the, the, this shell corporation that can actually uh, take on the $30,000 investment to start the engineering study. So the, the, the investment in that, in that entity will not be the St. George, will be part of that incorporation. We discussed, I think, several times, but it's important to actually inform the people that this is an option that we're exploring and we authorize the, the, our CAO to proceed. Because there are, there are people who are actually say we, we, we cannot wait three months or four months. We have to start now. You have the money. You can spend the money if you want to. I mean, St. George, if he wants tomorrow, can actually go and authorize spending $40,000 to proceed. And I don't have any problem with that. I just want to make sure that this, this investment is going to be done under the, the uh, industrial park corporation, so that both the benefits and the risks are going to be shared by a, a, a much larger community. So uh, are, 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 anybody has any concern about spending $2,000 for legal fees and, and other miscellaneous fees for setting up a corporation for that purpose? Uh, the only concern I have is we spend that money. Uh, are we going to be able to have this corporation set up before we are no longer, or are we just... Um, that was a question from... from I, I know, but that's just... The time frame is what I'm concerned about. I mean, we could go and get all the legal, you know, information that we need, but... Is, are we still going to be able to do anything about it? Oh, I, I, I don't propose that we spend the money for information. I'm, sp I'm proposing that we spend the money for setting up the corporation. Yeah, I understand that. And that, that. takes about uh, 10 days, like from the, from the time in which you submit your, your corporation application until you get back 
an answer from, from, from the provincial government. It takes about 10 days. 10 days to set up a corporation? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. I was under the impression that it would take a lot longer than no, 10 days. No, that, that if, 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 if we can do it, and this is what we checked, that some, some St. John has done it. So if we can do it, I'm proposing that we should actually make that minimal investment to actually try to protect our, our residents. Councillor Armstrong, you're more uh, up to date on things like corporations and businesses than, than I am. I'm a PR person, you're a businesswoman. Can you do that in 10 days? Uh, we've done it last, yes. But uh, you know, a, a, a personal business corporation to protect you as the business owner, it takes it so that if, if something goes wrong, you know, you're not going to lose your home. You're not, you know, yeah, you're protected. Know, a limited that's company really, type of thing. and yeah. and essentially, I think that's what we're do. What we're looking to do is take the risk away from the town in regards to whether or not this will go forward or not. That's really what he wants to do. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, so what you're asking, from my understanding, is so you're asking that the town spend two hundred two hundred two thousand dollars plus in incidentals, which which could be another one hundred and fifty or whatever, um, to to protect the town from this going sideways. Yes, that's, by, what you, by, that's by essentially by what you're saying. An industrial parks corporation, which right now will be owned by St. George, and come January first. By law, it would be owned by the entity. But does that protect us because we're going to lose our corporation as a town? Will that still give us that same protection? Okay. Yes. Because we're, not, we're no longer going to be an incorporated no, municipality. No, and, and what we know from the service, uh, service Commission and from, I guess, the Transition Committee is that uh, uh, the industrial parks are going to become a, a, a responsibility of the entity. So, so they're, will they're this associated from water and sewer. will this incorporation be specific to the growth uh, needs that we have that we're faced with right now for the industrial park? Yes. Yeah. So essentially, yeah. because the expansion that we contemplate from the approval that we have received from the government is for a specific industrial park expansion for a specific industrial park client, we. we we believe that we can actually f so, set up. So if I'm understanding correctly, essentially we have a $2,000 risk to protect us as a community, as a town, or we take the 40000 risk and, could, and it could go backwards on us. That's essentially what you're asking. We'll spend the $40,000 mm -hmm. if, if the thing is approved. Yep. The only difference is that if we spend them at St. George, we set up a precedent that the water and sewer system of St. George is going to be the owner, operator, and risk taker of this venture. Yes. If we actually compartmentalize it as a side venture, as an industrial park venture, then that risk and benefit is shared by a much larger entity. Okay. Councillor Rubin. No, I just legally will it carry over? Uh, I, as I said, the precedent is there. The precedent is there. Uh, St. John has done it and operates an industrial parks corporation for the last uh, 60 years now. It was done in the late 60s, I heard. So we're now, yeah. So, yeah, so it, 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 it is there. In fact, the, the, the gentleman who now is the caretaker of this uh, corporation uh, from St. John sent us some copies of their incorporation certificates. Uh, they are museum pieces. But they are still valid. They are still, they are still, they are still there. Saint John, St. John is still, is still incorporated, though they're not losing their operation. Correct. Correct. And we, we are. Correct. So our assets, including that corporation, is going to become the ownership of the new entity. We will still be responsible for water sewer, but we will not be responsible for the for the. No, for the I corporation. understand what yes. you're saying. It's just that the residents of Saint George, its user pay for water and sewage, and I don't feel that. Financially, the resident should be on the hook for anything like the forty thousand and or an increased rate looking for water for something that is going to benefit everybody as a whole. Do I make sense? No, I understand. That's where the two thousand comes from. But from, I'm just saying that, that does it, as Sam said, does it follow over once we lose our incorporation? Because St. John is still incorporated. But that's what the lawyer will tell you. That's part of, but, but, but like basically, all, all our assets, all St. John's assets, including any incorporation that we may have, 
is going to be transferred to to the entity. So, including our, our logos. I don't know about the logos, but anyways. Uh, uh, well, why do we have to pay 2000 when we already have a lawyer on hand? On, on why do you want us to do another 2000 to another lawyer? $2,000 buys you the following. Buys you a, a, a name search, buys you a, a lawyer drafting the incorporation, um, uh, how do you call this thing? The letters, letters of incorporation or something like that. Letters of patent. Letters of incorporation. Yeah, letters of incorporation. It buys you the, the provincial fee, which is about, what, three or four hundred bucks? Uh, I don't think like that. I think it's about two or three hundred bucks. Anyways, it buys you that. And in general, we are paying a lawyer, a retainer, to actually provide us general advice. If we're going to get him involved in a specific project, we actually pay him extra. It's part of... Our, our so but the lawyer will also tell you if it's actually possible in the event that we do Correct. lose our we, that we, That's actually the question. Very good Part point. of that question will be yeah. answered. Very good question. So it's not of waving our hands around this table. Uh, we can get a professional who's going to get us an opinion that's going to back with her expertise and do the job. I think it's a bargain. And we may not even spend the whole 2000 bucks. But our right? lawyer can do that too, can she not? Can she not do our lawyer? Yeah, we have a lawyer. She would, but this would be additional, this would be a legal cost yeah. associated with, with this search, yeah. with this work, yes. So you're saying our lawyer is saying that it would be an extra $2,000 to look yeah. into this? This particular yes. question. Not all the money is going to go to the lawyer. I mean, they, I'm saying the, 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 the promise is going to get three or 400 bucks. Uh, um, the name search, I think it's going to be a name search at some point that they have to actually satisfy. It's going to be a corporate name search. Uh, St. George Industrial Parks Incorporated it has to be uh, got a, a clearance that it's okay to use it, and uh, so you know, two thousand dollars is, a, is an, upper, an, upper, an upper estimate, but it, it's, a, it's an insurance that we can buy. So, uh, are there any concerns about that? No. Okay. Good. So, uh, can I have a motion for, to actually authorize Jason to actually have a budget of up two thousand dollars for doing this exercise? I'll make that motion. Anybody can second it? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, better than 40,000, I guess. I was going to say, I'm high. Sorry. Okay, yeah, sure. So, so, up to 2,000. Yes, yes, yes. Up to 2,000. He, 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 he has a, the responsibility and authority to spend them wisely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yes, it's, 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 uh, it's passed. Um, uh, the second thing I want to ask is, uh, that's much simpler. How much we are spending for the cast iron pots? Cast iron pots, um, they came out of the BIA fund, so they were, they were uh, earmarked for, um, for benches, um, some mainstream improvements. So I think, I think overall, I think they were four grand maybe for the cast Four grand for, 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 for pots yeah. from, from the BIA fund. BIA fund. Which yes. were like a, kind of our taxpayers for a special. Yes, it was the former BIA yeah. okay. when it dissolved. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, moving on. Uh, general reports update on local government report. Jason. <coughs> thank you, Your Worship. Um, working on, uh, for, for local government reform right now, it's, uh, we're working on a preliminary budget numbers across the two municipalities and six local service areas uh, that will form Eastern Charlotte. A 2022 comprehensive review has been done of, of budgeting and uh, we're now adjusting expenditures for the 2023 year. Uh, we're still developing a org, org chart uh, for staff for Eastern Charlotte <coughs> and compiling a asset list um, with an assistance of a third party that has been hired by, uh, by GNB. Uh, that's the status of local government reform. Any question on uh, um, the update on local government reform? Any questions? Uh, fire report, where is the chief? Thank you, Your Worship. 
Uh, for the month of August, we had 11 incidents. So that would be a, a typical month, I guess. Uh, one car accident, two false alarms, two ambulance assists, one mutual aid uh, fire, one mutual aid rescue, two water rescues, one outside fire, and one vehicle fire. Uh, in training, Firefighter Lee has been working on his Firefighter 1 JPRs uh, in conjunction with uh, Musquash Fire Department. Uh, so I thank, uh, thanks go out to Musquash for uh, assisting us with that. Bunker gear was ordered uh, for 2022, though I'm not sure it'll be here in 2022. It, it may not get here until 2023. Um, firefighters participated in fireworks display in Black's Harbor as well as the parade and the touch truck event and as well earlier in the month uh, they attended the uh, first responder expo that was uh, the, the lead up to the uh, musical ride over at the Ganong Nature Park. Uh, also, that's it. On a personal note, uh, I have resigned as the Association Training Coordinator for NBCC and the Fundy Firefighters Association after uh, eight or ten years in that position. Uh, I do intend to stay involved as, a, as an instructor and, and in the training world, uh, though I'm finding I'm a little bit too busy to, 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 to do the, the training coordinator part of it, so somebody else is... Uh, will be elected to do that and take over in uh, in January. And uh, and I'm taking another course through uh, through Dalhousie. So that, that's my report through for this month. Questions? Questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, transportation report. Jason. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I skipped one, yes, I'm sorry. Not intentional, Alex. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Your Worship. So um, the commission uh, drafted the, uh, the new Town of St. George zoning bylaw uh, 25C for your consideration. This is a new bylaw that would implement your proposed new municipal plan that is uh, being considered for third reading tonight. Uh, the, the new zoning bylaw introduces uh, several new zones and provisions per the municipal plan, and I'll, uh, I can talk more about that uh, if you would like uh, when you uh, uh, go to that motion on your agenda. Uh, but in order for council to adopt this new zoning bylaw, they must give a first reading and set a date for a public hearing of objections and request the views of the planning committee. So that would have to go into motion um, uh, based on your uh, how many uh, more time you have left in your term. Um, alternatively, if there is a consideration for uh, minor changes, we could look at that as well. But uh, yep, yeah, uh, with regard to the municipal plan, the uh, public hearing of objections was only attended by uh, several people in council and myself, uh, as well as the town staff with Jason, and that was a. That occurred on August 31st. Regards to development, development has not uh, been terribly busy this year as opposed to last year. Uh, it's just been 15 building permits so far and only one new permit in the report period uh, versus in August. Um, the total construction value of, for this year uh, uh, just totals uh, close to 600,000. Um, and as uh, Jason mentioned, we are working with the CAO on one uh, zoning and um, building enforcement file. So that concludes my report. Thanks. Um, I just just want to to um, to um, in passing uh, to actually get some information for the next item. Uh, this said uh, new zoning by law that you drafted. Yep. Uh, with regards to different zones, uh, I was I was discussing with Jason this morning about um, uh, the new zones that you have um, uh, included and the particular uses that you have articulated. Very very specific. And I was just wondering if this thing has been like what kind of uh, review this thing has reviewed from experts as to. Uh, yeah. uh, if you uh, would like, I can go into some of the 
the so rationale. You, you can do it on, when we discuss. The sure, thing. I can do okay, that now okay. or then. Yeah, okay, yep. let, let's do it, let's do it later because I, I have some some questions. And Certainly, I, yep. Yeah, sure. Um, so. Okay. Um, and just uh, one question. You said you had only one permit over the last month. Yeah, so it's been a fairly slow year. I think it's actually um, everything's slowed down in comparison to last year throughout the region. So it's not unusual. Um, also, just last year, uh, St. George was um, fortunate to have several large-scale developments, uh, the one in the industrial park, but then several other uh, big files. So it just can happen where um, you go in these cycles, and it just is a bit of a slower year. Um, it's not unusual to be this slow, uh, but um, this would be on the lower end of, uh, of what you would normally see for permits. Thank you. Yeah. Any questions from anybody? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Um, and we'll go now to Water and Sewer Report. Jason. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, the Water and Wastewater Report for August 2022. Water consumption for the month of August uh, has increased uh, to uh, 7.2 million gallons with an average daily con uh, usage of 241,606 uh, imperial gallons. Some of the increase can be attributed to uh, some extra use uh, in the industrial park for filling a fire protection pond. Uh, water levels in the wells have remained up and consistent throughout this summer. Um, some adjustment to the SCADA system parameters uh, for well three had to be made to eliminate an alarm issue. Um, the uh, catch tank under the chlorine reservoir well six had to be cleaned out uh, to, due to a broken fitting causing some chlorine to come out. Uh, the trim around the baseboard in well six was, uh, was reattached to the walls as well. Samson equipment reps were down to go over some issues with the chlorine pumps at a couple of the other wells. The injector uh, lance, lances uh, at the wells were removed and cleaned as part of a periodic uh, maintenance program. Chlorine pump settings uh, were adjusted for better performance. Uh, curb stop boxes and rods were replaced at the apartment building at 113 Main Street. Um, the curb stop at 99 Main Street was repaired and lower to avoid being hit during winter plow operations. Uh, Bi-weekly bi water samples were taken in the lab and eight water samples were received on August the 9th uh, for microbiological testing and, uh, and identified in the submitted results below. Um, and um, new thermostat was installed at the booster station. Um, a repair done was well in the well casing, well number three, which was mentioned earlier in the GUI report. So that was part of uh, that uh, groundwater report that we did. Water flushing and samplings were done at well three. Um, once that was back together, uh, we went back to well two, did some painting there on the door. Uh, the small gate valve boxes were given uh, to the maintenance crews at the high school for valve repair jobs. Uh, replacement parts uh, will be returned to us. A new diaphragm was installed for the valve at one of the splash pads here. Uh, the feature had been shut off for the majority of the summer, uh, waiting for warranty parts. Uh, spares have now also been secured. They sent down some extra pieces for us. Uh, there was a major uh, undertaking dug, dug up and replaced the water service line uh, to the residents at, uh, at uh, Hillcrest Drive. A service was also uh, installed to a vacant lot beside number four uh, while the trench was already open. Lagoon blower and buildings uh, underwent much needed uh, cleanup and reorganization. Annual servicing has started uh, to the blowers with the intake air filters uh, to the building uh, being cleaned. Um, <clears throat> And uh, new pressure, um, new air pressure gauge installed on the outlet line at Well Two or Lagoon Two. New markers were installed uh, at the post around the sediment pond for Lagoon Two as well. And uh, recurring issue for sewage lift station eight on uh, Campbell Hill was addressed and sorted out with the faulty control. Uh, the sewage lift station pump rep <clears throat> for Asylum in Dartmouth was in to check on their system to go over some future needs. And uh, we did sort of a bit of an inventory analysis of our sewage lift station pumps in town. A site visit, a visit from the government reps regarding the future future innovations of uh, lagoon and wastewater handling uh, was uh, was also made. Went over some of the ideas being addressed to help uh, limit harmful gases emissions. Uh, sort of uh, alternative ideas for uh, waste management. There are a couple issues with the storm sewer lines on Brunswick Street being addressed. Uh, 
both are on private properties but uh, affect our system as discharge into our main. And that is the end of the water wastewater report. Thank you, Jason. Um, questions? So that was an alarm issue and not an alarming issue. Yes, it's an alarm <laughs> issue. I wondered what the alarming issue was. Yes. I'm just, just gathering things so. um, the, uh, the SLS pump representative from Dartmouth, is there ever going to be a report come on that? What, are, what the future needs and costs might be to keep our system running in good working order? Is that the purpose that this happened? Uh, no, that was more or less, we, we provided them with the list of what we knew was our pumps. Uh, we have done asset management um, reports in the past, but this was more or less to provide uh, what we knew to get back a more detailed uh, report from him on you know how much horsepower the pumps are, you know what we could actually as well start switching them out instead of just being confined to one type of a pump. So that's sort of the reason why we're doing it is to sort of examine other types of pumps instead of just staying with one pump maker. Uh, is there something that we can you know add a bracket, add, add some sort of a, uh, a spacer that we could then put other pumps in so we're not having to deal so with this. So this has nothing pumps. to do with the lifespan? No, no, it wouldn't, no, it wouldn't do. I mean, we, we, we pull that information of our asset management so we know when they were put in. Um, we did discuss, you know, some, some things, uh, you know, annual maintenance um, projects. Um, so we, we will probably be bringing in the manufacturer to come in and do an actual, uh, uh, I guess, a bit of a training uh, for some of our guys because we do have uh, two to three new guys. So. Mm -hmm. So then that takes me to the next one around the government reps coming in and talking about um, limiting, limiting ga harmful gas emissions. Again, is there a report on, on how we can work this through and just No, no report. No, this is just more or less a preliminary discussion on what we're doing. Uh, uh, Sewage Lagoon is a very, uh, uh, very um, pre preliminary way of treating waste. There's other, other ways of doing that. So... Um, so we just more or less was a, an information session um, to sort of as well make some contacts with them uh, and who in our industrial park is a contact for them as well. So uh, most of their focus is, is certainly on industrial waste, not necessarily residential waste. So the, um, the, stu the storm sewer lines that are on private property, is that a cost that the town has to absorb or is it shared yeah. by the homeowner and the town be shared by the landowner sure. yes yeah okay actually uh, jason you're talking about the bio and b right the, in your yes. yeah i just want to actually a very semantic thing it was not a government um agency in fact it was an ngo non-government organization <laughs> which is um it's um it's essentially getting um try to put together industry and government programs together um, for um, uh, potential um, uh, anaerobic treatment of organic waste, which will produce gas that you can burn and produce power. So if that was, if the industry was interested to actually go th through that way, and there are many incentives for the industry to go that way, uh, it could have actually take some some waste out of our hands, basically, and that was where we were essentially. Um, and the, the, the healthy thing is uh, that um, uh, they are they are they the the parties know each other. I mean, the uh, the NGO has a good contact with the industry at a very high level, and um, they also have worked with Envy Power, who may be the customer for the power that they produce. So it was a very useful meeting. I found it a very useful meeting, and when we we met uh, some of the industrial uh, park uh, uh, players, uh, they, they 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 knew about it, and they 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 they, they, would, they, they were in discussions. So it, it's a it, it was a, a very useful uh, thing, which was actually um, um, uh, brokered by a resident of St. George, Stanislav. The you know. Um, any other question? Transportation. Thank you, Worship. Um, transportation report for the month of August 2022. 
Um, with the summer student program done for the season, duties have and tasks have fallen back to the regular crew. Mowing, garbage collection, and water of flowers continue to be a priority. <clears throat> Infrastructure locate, locates uh, continue to be handled uh, as a request comes in. Um, trackless or uh, municipal tractor has been busy uh, flail mowing various locations where the mower can't access. Uh, once again, the portable speed trailer sign was uh, has been uh, used and to monitor vehicle speeds around town. It was kept in, uh, for three weeks to return to uh, Lawrence Station. High Rock Construction replaced some curb and gutter, uh, Main Street and Mount Pleasant, uh, Lake Riverview as well. Some painting was done on the backhoe to eliminate uh, bad rust spots, uh, such as the step side. Vehicle inspections were completed. A complete service was done on truck three in preparation for the upcoming fall winter season. Uh, a, a new gate close a dust sign was installed at uh, Canal Beach. More asphalt uh, patching was done at various locations. Uh, garbage cans were replaced. A new picnic table uh, was placed at the Eagle's Nest and Splash Pad. Broken sign posts were replaced at the vacant lot at the corner of Riverview in Maine for pedestrian crossing. Uh, and a, a memorial tree was planted uh, by the Dunwoody family at uh, Dunwoody Corner. The high school reunion uh, group uh, brought some of the items, such as uh, just the wooden barricades. A uh, little gravel was donated to fill a spot to make the area safer. Um, a small washout area at the driveway to the booster station was filled in. Some damaged, vandalized walkway uh, boards were replaced at the Adventure Center. Um, picnic tables had to be keep shifting around at Canal Beach as people moved them onto the beach and back. A new swing was installed at Canal Beach as well. A piece of plexiglass uh, was installed here at the uh, playground at McAdavick Center. Uh, with the tennis courts being over stall, uh, overhauled a, uh, to set up the pickleball nets, uh, some of the old tennis nets and posts were removed and stored at a vacant building at the Adventure Center. A uh, major clean organization was done to the garage uh, at the town hall. Hangers were installed uh, for grass trimmers as well as uh, stock water material uh, sorted out. Bucket truck was rented um, by Look Tell Auto to remove the grad banners. Um, and an access road at uh, Prince William Street uh, was mowed through. We temporarily use of that, that road. It's not really a road, it's an official pathway, I guess, uh, while we shut down uh, Hill, Hill, Hillcrest Drive. <clears throat> Two signs were replaced after the Hillcrest job was done. Uh, both had to be replaced uh, for access uh, for machinery. Uh, had to be removed. Uh, Sunga spots in the vacant lot at the end of uh, Brunswick Street were filled in. Topsoil was used to fill in a couple holes along the Day Adventure Center walkway. Uh, table at the Upper Falls Park was removed uh, for wheelchair access. It goes along with the wheelchair uh, picnic table that we have at the Lower Basin as well. And um, a building at the Day Adventure Center uh, is being used for storage. Um, it was a vacant one and uh, they did some uh, sort of prevent, uh, to prevent unwanted access, did some work down there. To the mental health awareness banners uh, were taken down and uh, we replaced those. There, we had some on stock that were replaced. So barricade, barricades that were loaned out uh, for work at the Upper Falls Dam to block off the yard for vehicles. Uh, truck 3 is beginning to show some signs of electrical issues that will require attention in the near future. Primary diagnostics at our shop has not located the issue, so more depth searches will be needed uh, with better equipment so they can be done. It's a transportation report. Thank you, Jason. Questions? Nope. What year is truck three? How old is it? Uh, 15. 15 years old? Yeah. When's no, it 15, due? 2015. Oh, 2015. When's it due for replacement? Uh, we typically try to get 10 years out of those. 2015. Okay, so we got a ways to go then. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, if there are no more questions, we move to uh, item number eight, bills paid and payable in principle to August 31st, 2022, in the amount of um, $742,211.75. Questions?
How many foul pools was that? Wow. How many? What did you two. Two what? Two foul pools. I have no questions. They are all happy? I have no questions. Okay. okay. So no questions. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a new one. Um, can I have a motion for um, approving? So moved. I'll second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. So it has been approved. New business. Back to Alex. Uh, the new municipal plan by law 24C. Um, so I guess uh, we'll have a second and third and final reading for this uh, bylaw. I'm just wondering how you want to handle it. Are there any, any, anything that you want to add, uh, Alex, from... Uh with regard to the municipal plan, I don't have any more comments. I think we've, uh, we've gone through it now with, uh, I believe it's been three meetings, uh, with the first reading, the public presentation, and now the public hearing. So um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them at this point. Any questions? I think we have done quite a lot of work on that one, too. I agree. So how we handle the second and third reading? Uh, uh, I just need a motion. Um, so it'll be a second reading of the municipal plan. Uh, this will be by... Uh, by title only? Pardon me? By title only. Uh, one of those will be by full. I mean... We have had this posted. It will be available. It's been it's been available for uh, for review. So um, so we can just say as submitted. Um, but yes, we need a motion for second, and then a motion for third and final. Okay. So can I have a motion for a second, please? I make a motion for the second reading of the municipal bylaw plan 24C. I'll second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, third and final reading enactment of the municipal plan bylaw 24C. That's a lot of reading? That would be third and final reading, yes. So we're going to read it, the whole thing? No, no, we don't need to read the whole thing. It's, uh, <laughs> it has been made available. It's been on draft since then. So, um, so yes, as submitted okay. in its current form. So um, can I have a motion? I make a motion to accept the third and final reading for the proposal for the Town of St. George Municipal Plan by Law 24C. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. It's going to receive royal assent soon. Correct. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, the new zoning bylaw uh, 25C. Uh, and that, I suppose, if everybody has a copy, uh, is what Jason sent us. There it is. Worship. So this would, uh, that's correct. Uh, so Alex can certainly yeah. offer an introduction for this bylaw, um, provide some background. Yeah. So if I may. Yeah. So uh, yes, this bylaw that you have, uh, which you would have received, um, and the public wouldn't have seen yet, because uh, you have to consider if you're going to refer this public for a hearing. Um, but this is a bylaw that would implement your municipal plan bylaw that you've just passed. Um, the bylaw contains the zones that were laid out in the municipal plan um, regarding the uh, proposed zones. So there's uh, uh, five what's called urban zones and then the three uh, what's called rural zones. Um, so this zoning bylaw is, uh, is unique in some regards. Uh, you'll see uh, it's quite different than what you had. Um, uh, first things first, it's a significantly streamlined bylaw. Uh, we had a, a fairly unwieldy and large bylaw for St. George to work with at a, coming in at 105 pages. This bylaw brings it down to 42. Um, so it simplifies the rules and explains your zone in, in one or two pages. So you can print it out and you can visually see what it would look like to develop on your property. Uh, as a picture of a, you know, a typical house or a typical building in your zone. Um, so another example would be in the current zoning bylaw, you have 25 pages of definitions. 
this reduces that uh, significantly. Um, in the current zoning bylaw, I have 24 pages of ru general rules that apply to various things, parking, landscaping, other general provisions, uh, related detailed, uh, details around row houses, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it reduces it from 24 pages down to 12. Uh, it's also compatible with the Building Code Administration Act. So one of the things that um, is coming into play for the new entity is a, a new requirement when it comes to building bylaws. Your current Saint, Town of St. George building bylaw will be uh, repealed at the end of the uh, year, and you'll fall under the general regulation until the new Eastern Charlotte Community Council adopts uh, its own building bylaw in compliance with that new act. But this anticipates that. Uh, one of the things is it requires it requires development permits for small structures, accessory structures like garages. The new Building Code Administration Act is no longer going to be applying code to small structures like garages, even in municipalities. So um, some of the rules that would be typical in rural areas are actually coming into municipalities. So what this does, it, it makes sure that you still need development permits, zoning permits for garages and such like that. Um, so it uh, makes sure that you know people are falling setbacks and not building right on top of their proper neighbor's property line uh so we talked about how this is a visually attractive document we've used a similar format in the town of saint stephen so when it came to like the idea of using this concept we've trialed some of it in saint stephen already and it works really well with the general public in terms of easy to understand this is very different uh bylaw in terms of the zones for saint george though and is unique to St. George. It, it does a lot to encourage housing, uh, specifically rental housing, uh, in terms of uh, more than one unit on, on a lot. Uh, it, it does also encourage commercial and institutional development in appropriate scales in various uh, types of zones. You'll notice there's no specific residential zones, and that comes right out of the municipal plan as we, as we uh, propose it to you. But it has different intensities. So certain certain areas that were traditionally uh, residentially zoned might have the U1 designation. So that's your zone with lesser population density uh, and smaller scale other types of uses. So stuff that's not going to change the character of the area away from residential. Um, when it comes to uh, climate, there's lots of provisions in there related to climate change that weren't in the uh, old zoning bylaw. The old zoning bylaw had a different approach to dealing with floodplains it kind of just said here's a waiver you can build at your own risk this doesn't do that and there's a reason for that because just signing a waiver isn't it's not taking it far enough uh in in my opinion my professional opinion you need to set down really good rules when it comes to developing areas that are subject to flood risk and uh, we're proposing that you put in some standards related to people developing in known floodplains, but also when it comes to the McAdavid Basin, where that will be subject to some sea level rise. Um, we also uh, talked about how this is a very unique zoning bylaw in terms of uh, well, visual appearance and how people can read it. Also in terms of what it can encourage in terms of development. Um, very flexible for a lot of people, how they could use their property without um, but throwing away all all rules or regulations. This is this what we're trying to do is hit the balance that the municipal plan aimed for. But also does a number of things uh, other than just encouraging the right kinds of development. It also protects agriculture in a way that uh, the current zoning bylaw uh, doesn't. Um, for example, reducing um, the sizes of lots that you can develop in agricultural zones. Now, not every part outside of the uh, service boundary of St. George is zoned agricultural. Uh, there's a number of areas that are left rural settlement. So these are areas we could do the one acre lots, potentially smaller if you have access to a, a sewer water line where you can do camps and so on. But in the areas that have really good agricultural viability, we put those in this sort of protective agricultural zone. So uh, that, that reduces uh, potential for small lot subdivisions getting in the way of people running uh, farms. So I think that's something that's come up recently is a pretty big and important issue for the community. So I think that summarizes the, the gist of it, uh, but I'm sure there's lots of questions because it's a, still a 42 page document um, and there's a lot to digest there, so.
I'm going to start from the right. Any, any questions? Um, from the left, any questions? I think you asked a question earlier and that Alex was supposed to follow up about uh, yes. the, speci the specificity of sure. livestock in particular. Like we, let, we define like one animal unit and we look at animal units like for example it's one horse. How do, like, where did that come from? How did you figure out that one horse was suitable for 400 meters square? Yeah. So that's not a list that I came up with. This is something which we're using that would be standard, uh, either standard uh, zoning sort of provisions, but we're also looking at what the Department of Agricultural, uh, Department of Agriculture, Aquaculture, and Fisheries uses for uh, general, uh, uh, what do you call animal units? It's essentially just management of animal manure. So making sure that you don't have a thousand pigs on a one acre property where you're gonna overwhelm the land's ability to absorb that kind of nutrient. So it's, uh, it's about reducing the amount of, uh, of uh, basically nutrient input into the land. Well, um, I want to follow up on that one. Um, we had a discussion with Jason today and I, I'm not sure that um, the units and, and, and correspondence to limits that, that have been set up here have any, any bearing to reality with uh, any real agricultural uh, operation. For example, uh, if, if, if um, there are specialized units who actually grow little pigs and they farm them out to other companies who actually grow them bigger. In a place like that, one has a building, he may have like 3,000 pigs, little yep. pig, piglets, okay? And he grows them up to a size and then he sells them. Um, chickens, if you have chickens and you have like a, a, a unit to produce eggs, you're gonna have thousands of chickens in, in basically a two acre lot and you have ways of managing the manure. So these things are not captured there and I'm not sure if any person from the Department of Agriculture has seen this correspondence. So w one thing that I would have liked to see if, if um, if uh, to get some someone from the Department of Agriculture to actually um, take a look in, 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 in the limits that you are proposing uh, here to, 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 um, to confirm that they are realistic. Um, because, you know, uh, um, uh, my second question, my second question is, um, um, so that, that's one action that we would have liked to actually put on with you and, um, uh, and, and we can actually um, return to it uh, uh, on the next council meetings if you have been able to actually get this information. Uh, the other thing which I, 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 I kind of uh, struck me uh, is uh, how much more government this, this document introduced to our lives. Um, um, you know, I, I just went through the sign permits and fees and there are several pages about what kind of science exists and how the letter size and maybe the font should be, um, what kind of permits you have if you decide to actually change the, the, the color of your sign. Uh, there is a lot of government there, a lot of government. And you know, we, uh, just to actually give you a, a, some insight, the new entity uh, moved on to actually moving from a town to a, a, a rural community. So. There is a lot of things there that goes the other way than what, what people are actually want. So I'm just, I'm just wondering. Um, um, I know that this, this cuts down the pages from 140 pages to, to, to what? I mean, it's 42. 40, yeah, it's a smaller font, though. It's a much smaller font. But anyways, uh, uh, so I, 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 um, I, um, I, are there any, uh, uh, any, any, compelling reasons that we have to deal with this document now in our lifetime. Why would we not do it? Yeah. I'm sorry? Why would we not do it? I'll tell you what, because I, I before we actually I, before I actually vote on this one, I really not, what 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 he mentioned about this thing has been cleared by the Department of Agriculture, I want to hear that thing and confirm. Second part of that is pulled a public hearing. That's the second part of the whole Correct, thing. Correct, but yeah. in order to actually have a public hearing, we need to actually ensure that what... We, well, what, we could, we can keep stalling it, whatever. Uh, no, it's, it's not a major, a major uh, you think it's a major job, uh, Alex, to actually give us this, uh, 
this confirmation or a, a review from the Department of Agriculture? So there's a couple ways you can handle this. And I, I uh, as I mentioned in, when I gave my uh, just general report, I, I don't want to put you under the pressure of you have to adopt, you have to go with this right now because you're, you're just seeing this now. And it's a, it is a big, big deal to adopt a new zoning bylaw. So what you could do, and this would, you'd have to look at your schedule. Um, if you want to keep this on a pretty tight schedule because you, 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 don't, you don't have uh, all the time in the world here, um, you're going to want to look at um, getting probably, um, if, you, if you want to delay doing um, a second, sorry, a first reading and referring it to PRAC and, and having a document that you're ready to send to the public, you're going to want to meet in one week's time. And I'll get an answer for you. And um, if there's any amendments needed, I can get that to you in one week's time. Uh, I, I tell you what, uh, is it possible if you can actually get someone from the Department of Agriculture to yep. come down here and who can actually go through this because there are a lot of, I mean, I, I am I'm keenly interested. Uh, some other people, other councillors are keenly interested. Uh, I like to actually understand uh, how this thing came about and together we're, today we're looking with Jason about, you know, what other municipalities that have this kind of agricultural use have in their things. Mm. And we're not able to actually find uh, anything meaningful to actually uh, so I, I believe that the person of the Department of Agriculture may have that information, and I, I, I like to actually understand yeah. the basis of what's going on no, here. Certainly, and as I said, like we've we've used these types of um, terminology, animal units, and this sort of basis in other rural plans that Department of Agriculture has seen. In this case, it's because it's basically we've used this types of provisions before. I didn't refer to them specifically for this zoning reg, but we can. And what I could do is I could get a hold of them. I can't promise on their behalf that they'd attend your council meeting, but um, I would do my very best to get uh, them to comment on this specific draft. Um, but again, they've seen this type of proposal from us before with other regulations, which we've had to send by them. But in this case, um, where it was um, stuff that they've seen before in different cases, um, I, I didn't see there was a need to go back to them for the exact same comment. Can I ask you which, which unit in the Department of Agriculture deals with this kinds of... Um, Lynn Moore. So Lynn if you... Um, she's commented on the, uh, the Fundy Bay Rural Plan draft that's being considered at the end of this month. And so you'll see very similar terminology being used there. So, okay. Yeah. So let, 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 let's do that. I mean, I, yeah. I, I would have liked to actually get a confirmation from you before I actually yeah. put it to, to the council to actually we know that we, we, are, we have the right document here. So yeah, and you can do you can do that um, in a couple ways. So if you're going to do your first reading, um, well, there's a number of things you could do. So if you're going to um, look to do some amendments to this document, um, you can either delay your first reading and you're setting a date for a public hearing and referring it to committee, um, or you can just go ahead with it as is and get the ball rolling but if you do want to make amendments you, you might have to readjust your date for your public hearing and, and so on so it might be best to hold off if you're considering some amendments to this document i i have identified seven, and together with jason we identify certain things which do not define an agricultural use uh, if you follow them to the letter okay and th th that's why i want to yeah. actually confirm that this is correct or not uh, so um, I'll, I'll do my best to get a hold of uh, this person, if that's the will of council, and uh, look to make sure we're, we're in line. And if there's any other things council would like to uh, communicate tonight, I can make sure we get something in place. Again, we, we have a pretty short time frame here, so I would suggest getting together in at least uh, a week from today. To, to do your first reading with the new amendments yeah. and so on. The other thing which I, I mentioned earlier is like about, say, signage, for example. If I look at the perimeter that requires even to paint a sign, it's daunting. I mean, for a small community of 1,000 people or a rural community to actually have to actually apply uh, for a sign to paint your sign, I mean, uh, are we trying to introduce solutions for problems that do not exist? And I'm just trying to understand why these things are even there. Yeah, so, I mean, there is currently in your zoning bylaw, there is uh, uh, requirements for, uh, for signs. Um, what this does is it actually introduces several categories of signs you don't need permits for. But it's very, very specific about signage. So if there's a category or there's something council seeing that you 
say that's we really don't need a section on portable signs. What you would do, um, you either can do one of two things. You say, here are rules for portable signs, but you don't need a permit. We're trusting the public to, to follow the rules that we lay down, but we're not going to chase people for a permit for it. That's one way to do it. The other approach would be just to delete the section altogether. The problem being, if you do that, if it's not permitted expressly, it's prohibited. So you could be in a situation where a business is putting up portable signs, for example, and it's not listed in your bylaws as some form of advertising that they're permitted to do in the community. It could be an issue down the road when a future administration looks at that and says, well, you don't have the permit or permission to do that type of advertising. It's not allowed. You have to stick to the stuff that's mentioned in the bylaw. So if you think it's a little bit onerous to, to obtain sign permits for all these things, I think the solution might be just to say that all these types of sign permits uh, that you don't think are necessary in the, in the view of council, I should say, um, then just make those things that don't require permits, but, that, but that's the way you want them. If, if you need to use those provisions, they're there for you to deal with a problem that may arise. So. Okay. Um, um. In this zoning bylaw for education in terms of I noticed that in this particular bylaw based on our old one is the terminology you go from you know uh, residential to you and you, there's some changes that confuses me as the reader but it's going to confuse the 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 community as well when you've been in a, in a residential one for I don't know however many long yeah. and all of a sudden now you're a U one yeah. so there is I think there's a little el educational element that has mm. to how is that going to be looked at yeah and that's a that's a great question I think uh, we could we could make some comparisons to the different new zones to what um, uh, what were what were in place so I think if you had U one that would be similar to an uh, an R2 zone, um, and U2 might be similar to more of an R3 type of zone, potentially, but, there's, but they're actually quite different. The reason they're not called residential or commercial specifically, in, in, in the way that a lot of zoning has become a bit of an uh, impediment for community development, let's say you're in an area that's a residential zone, and somebody wants to do something that has a, sort of a business nature, or they're going to do a multi-unit development, the problem with do, doing the, the uh, categories of residential, commercial, institutional strictly, it, does, it almost creates a perception that nothing else could ever happen here. So if somebody starts a little business, then it's like, you can't be here, it's a residential zone, and it becomes a bit of an issue. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you kind of say, well, we're just all in this sort of built up area of the municipality, and this is at various degrees of intensity, and we're in the lowest intensity area, it takes away some of that perception that other things don't belong here. So it's just trying to say that it opens that up a little bit. So that's kind of the idea behind that. Yeah. Okay. Well, the problem that I have with that is I think landed on my desk today and same with other, the other councillors. I mean, and, and um, uh, we have a lot of questions ourselves before we say, oh, let's vote the first reading. It's Thursday. Yeah. Well, we've had it. Uh, how, when you have it? We've had this. I've read it twice. Okay, it this took like me it. twice to try to understand it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, but I read it. Yeah, yeah I, I, And then we just got this. Yes, so I have... It's just the various, well, three designations that you told, wasn't there? Yeah, there? so yeah. What, what you would see in your package Thursday was um, the same document, but when we were going through some things with the map, um, Jason picked up a property and we picked up three properties that needed to go from our, uh, U1 or U2 to U3. So I think it was... Uh, so uh, that's, that's what I'm saying. That, that there are a lot of... It's a new thing and there are yeah. still... I mean, the, 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 there are things that we are still finding. So uh, and there is nothing urgent about this thing. No, I, I but can, I mean, we have had it before yes, tonight. And, I, and I do have a problem philosophically about um, the fact that we are moving in a direction of a lot more government in very little things, try to solve um, having solutions for problems that do not exist. And any time you do that, um, there are problems with the community, with the businesses, with the residents. Uh, I, just, I just need some, some like if, if, if you can actually get us some information with regards to, first of all, confirm that what he has there passes mustard with respect to uh, 
uh, units, for example, for, for, for farming and animals. And uh, as perhaps have a discussion about, do we really need to actually have all these sign uh, bylaws? Do we need to have all these permits? Like if, if you want to actually uh, 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 change the color of your sign outside, I mean, a hairdresser, that he has to go to St. Stephen and apply for a permit and wait for the permit and then have an inspector come to inspect whether or not she painted the right way or not. It's a lot more government. So I, th I think it's worthwhile to actually have this discussion before we say, let's vote for that. That's my, 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 my thinking. I'm comfortable with one more week. I'm comfortable with waiting one week. You want to, you want to? I am comfortable with waiting one more week. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So let, yeah, okay, so. So if, if it's, if I could pr uh, propose this to your worship, is it possible that council could meet again? I don't know what the, your schedule is too, Jason, but is it possible council could meet again to do like a bit of a workshop? Like you get your, if you get your comments to us, then we could, uh, we could make sure that they're all on the record and then we can go section by section <laughs> to see if there's anything that would be amended. It's a two way I mean, it's a, it's a two directions. I mean, you have to do some homework, and you have to do some homework, right? Yes, yeah. I, I agree with what he proposed. Like, that we, we do need to have a power power within the council about about this thing before we say let's green light it and move on. Yeah, as council. So we wouldn't have to. We wouldn't be scheduling a special meeting in a week's time. We do have to have some some days for it to be okay. scheduled as a spe special meeting. So, I guess at this point we would just. You know, this would be we, uh, if council wishes to table this, <clears throat> and we can table just the meeting of uh, um, the zoning bylaw at this point and okay. bring it back out either in a special meeting or the next regular meeting at the latest. Okay. But in between that time, we would we would try to convene council in a in a meeting and workshop and to review this. Okay. So, can I have a motion to table it for a week? Uh, make that motion to table it for a week, yes. Okay. And uh, can I have a second? I'll second it. And uh, only favor for for uh, for um, uh, this motion. Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, Uh, gas tank, f if I know, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, number six, nine C, gas tax fund, allocation of funds and adjustment to uh, <coughs> GTF, what's the G GTF? The gas tax fund. Oh, gas tax fund, okay. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So just uh, bringing in this to council, just for a re revision of the five-year capital investment plan. So. Uh, making the adjustments as follows. So uh, we've done some adjustments to the plan, uh, I think back in April, uh, when we allocated funds to do paving in St. George. So um, this would be another ad adjustment to the, the gas tax uh, agreement. So additional uh, 20,463 to be allocated from gas tax fund to the utility for the purpose of water utility infrastructure projects for 2022. And that would be for the lower bridge uh, pipe insulation. So as I mentioned earlier that we did allocate some funds for both well number two upgrades and the lower bridge uh, pipe insulation. So we did the well in, the well uh, number two upgrades. Those came in a little over uh, uh, budget. So uh, we can go back to gas tax. There are funds available um, in the gas tax account. And in addition, uh, $10,000 be allocated from gas tax to the street road. Uh, resurfacing projects for 2022 as well. Um, so really right now, I think we have uh, just a little over 30,000, 30, 30 uh, I think maybe around 35,000 or so that's left in the gas tax fund. So that would use up the remainder of that portion for these, uh, for these projects. Um, next year, we do have the final year of the gas tax plan. Uh, I believe next year is 100 and might be 100 and 19,000 that will be coming in under gas tax. Um, so right now, as, it, as the plan stands, uh, it'd still be used for the Manor Road. Uh, that was on the, the original plan for the gas tax. So of course that will be uh, into the new entity and the plan will just go ahead, proceed as is. Any question? If 
I may, I want to ask, uh, uh, just before, I, before we move on to the next one, I want to ask uh, uh, Alex uh, a question on the, uh, it just came to me, I had it right now, but I forgot to ask it. Uh, with that new zoning by law, um, a building like uh, the one that we are building now on Canal Beach, if it was inside the town, would have been able to be built? Yes. Uh, do you want me to go up there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a reality check that I want to actually. So um, y your question is in, in Canal, uh, where you're building that new building, could that be done under the zoning bylaw? Well, it, it, it really depends would be the answer because it depends what zone it would be located in. But um, what we, if we were using the same sort of rationale that was used in this document in uh, the St. George LSD, um, what it would be uh, would probably be in the conservation zoning category, which is mostly parks and open space uses, which this would be uh, accessory to that and be permitted. I'm talking about flooding. And the other thing we'd be looking at doing with, uh, with that would be to make sure that all your electrical um, and other kind of key plumbing components are considering the flood line. So. That would be one of the things that would be uh, okay. required. So, okay. Yeah. 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 This this one I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. We still got to make a motion for this. Which one? The one that we were just talking about, the gas tax one. You got to make oh, yes, a motion. Oh yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, um, if we don't have any question about the gas fund, uh, tax fund, we need a motion for the allocation of funds as per, per what uh, Jason had proposed. Okay. I make a motion that we. Uh, do the allocation to put the funds into the gas tax fund. And, and the exact wording, move that the document entitled Town of St. George revised five-year capital investment plan for the GTF administrative agreement 2019 to 2023 be adopted. Second. Any favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to item uh, 9D, St. George Monument and Time Capsule. Um, just, uh, uh, Jason, do you want to introduce the, the subject? Sure, Your Worship. Uh, yes. Um, so this is uh, just a proposal for a monument sculptor, uh, sculpture uh, to be uh, placed here in St. George to commemorate the, um, I guess, the departure of the town of St. George uh, in, as part of reform. And um, a, a, a project overview has been distributed to council uh, for this for this proposal. Uh, I have a question. Uh, did we spend money on this one uh, already? We have. We have spent some money. Um, we brought the uh, a sculptor in to look at stones and possibilities. So I think there's $140 there, and uh, to do a preliminary. Uh, casting type of design there was about two hundred dollars spent there and the casting design has been rejected um, yeah well it's because still of cost considerations yes okay. there's okay. certainly a, yeah. So, yeah there's quite an extensive cost for doing a, uh, okay. like a bronze so, plaque. so um, um, and the money for this one here comes from where so it was uh, believed that this would be being allocated from tourism funds so tourism funds to be received that are are uh, currently part of the uh, tourism levy that we receive each year. Which uh, we have been accumulating money on this fund for how long? Uh, that's been in act uh, since 2021. 2021. So, so we started collecting money in 2021. Correct. And uh, uh, have we spent any of that money? Uh, money each year is, is spent for tourism items. I mean, it's what we would consider as uh, anything that we would find as a tourist draw. To St. George, so I mean, a thing like a spa splash pad operation could be considered that. Um, you could even consider, you know, anything to do with recreation, like Canal Beach operations and, and upgrades, can be considered that as well. So we have okay. used some of the funds. Um, so as of right now, there's only two two uh, uh, two accommodations that are paying into that levy. Um, so you know that will be looked at, I'm sure, in the near future. But uh, right now, it's the motel and the hotel that are paying into the levy. To be done at the Eagle's Nest. You yep. have, you know, anything really that's, that's, that's tourism, considered that's a tourism, tourism spot. area, and certainly the Eagle's Nest, we've received a, a lot of money in the past, you know, the last few years for from tourism, Department of Tourism for upgrades there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm also thinking that maybe some benches and some garbage cans along the New Coastal Trail would be something we could. 
Yeah, the, co the coastal trail is not complete yet, so we're still looking at benches, but um, certainly, I mean, that, you know, I don't think there's a whole lot of funds in for benches. Um, in fact, there, I, I know there's not. I mean, we, we do spend, you know, four or five grand uh, on, a, on actual municipal benches when I think they only have uh, $2,000 left for some of those add-ons. So, um, so, yes, it could be used for those things as well. I had uh, some questions on the budget that you have proposed. Uh, there are small items, but um, they're, they're about a few thousand bucks. Um, the stones were supposed to be donated. Has anything changed? Uh, yes, the stones have changed. I contacted the owner of those stones and... He wants 200 bucks? He wants 100 bucks each, yes. Okay, so, okay, I thought well, they, were, they, were, they were gratis. Uh, and the second thing is, with regards to the safety supervision, uh, you put there about fifteen hundred dollars, uh, yeah, from what I said. That's correct. Um, Why is that, uh, assistant? So there was. I, I just we just looked at the cost of a minimum wage of having something. A worst case scenario that if we had to have somebody hired to assist the sculptor. Um, so there's a safety concern that he raised of working alone. Um, so worst case scenario is that he would have somebody there. Now we did look at bringing this, the sculptor work to the, the town hall. Yes. Um, so that you have to work during business hours of the town hall. Now, it's not always somebody there in the town yard. So, you know, I mean, that, that's something we'd have to discuss with him to make sure. But at the very, this is again, a, a budget that's that's looking at the, the far reaches of how much this could cost just for the sculpture, the okay. sculptor. And where where was that, that sculpture was supposed to be put? Uh, when, once completed? Yes. So it will be, uh, I believe the, it's going to be put in the front of the Macadavic Place here. So it's going to be like a St. George monument in front of the Macadavic Place? Correct. Okay, for the town of St. George, which I guess uh, is going to seal its chapter and the thing, okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you just, this email that I have here now, you're telling me that if we went ahead with this, that the monument slash sculpture is going to cost the town of St. George $18,450. That's what we're budgeting. Correct. That's what you're saying. It, like with this uh, sculpture, I went online and looked him up, and like $6,600, uh, $3,000, 1250 1800 $5,000, $18,450. Is that correct? $18,450, yeah, $18, correct. I just wanted to make sure that I'm reading it the way. Correct. So that wouldn't include anything such as a time capsule. That would be addition, any type of, uh, um, I guess. Uh, and this is all for a time capsule. I, I thought we were just talking time capsule. We seem to have got carried away with all this. I, I personally would think that the town of St. George residents would probably shoot me as a counselor if I said, yeah, go ahead and spend $18,000 for a time capsule. I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. I thought we were talking about a time capsule that we were going to get a small piece of granite, drill a hole in it, and put a capsule, either stainless steel, aluminum, whatever, won't rust. And inside of that, we could put things that would be particular to the town of St. George and seal it over and maybe put a little plaque, $1,000, and we're done. Um, I mean, with a plaque. Yeah, no, yeah, with a plaque. I mean, like you put a little plaque on the front and says "Time Capsule, 1904 to 2022," um, or "Town of St. George was Incorporated," something very similar, and just as you say, set it out front here. But to hire a sculptor for $6,600 and to pay X number of dollars for him to stay at a hotel, and then to do is $3,000 for his expenses, $3,000 for tools. I want to know what kind of tools he's getting for $3,000 because I'll go out and take my little hammer and put a hole in a piece of granite, but uh, maybe I'm being facetious or being s silly here, but no, no way. I don't want to have anything to do with $18,000 for a time capsule. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Okay. I do, yeah, yeah I, okay, time capsule, like I said. So I guess, uh, I, guess uh, I, I want to actually hear, hear, first of all, if there is any support for anything close to that budget. Not close to this point. No, I'm asking the, the other councillors there. No, I'm not in favour of it. Okay. Not for that price, uh, no. Can I ask you, uh, did we pay $5,000 for, for the washrooms uh, for a tourist centre last, uh, last year? That was from that same fund? 
the washrooms for the tourist yes. center. I put a tourism um, center. That Bel would have come out of for, for the VIC at Granite Town Farms. So it comes from the, the tourism we would, levy? We would have contributed money, yes, to, the, okay, to their so, use. Okay, so, Last uh, year they were still in sort of a, a gray area whether or not they were still the visitor information center. So uh, council at that time, um, I think this was the previous council, okay. voted to, to prove that. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just uh, if we don't spend the money which has been allocated from this fund, I think we have a responsibility to the taxpayers of St. George to actually return that money. Because in the new, the starting January, everybody in this, in this, um, in this um, uh, entity is going to be paying about three times what we are paying now to the Service Commission for Tourism Development. So there is, a, there is a need to actually look at the bylaw and say if we're going to continue having it or not before, and then decide about the money. Uh, but yeah, you may be right. I mean, there may be things that we can do on, 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 the, on the English nest or, or whatever, but uh, there is a need to actually... Yeah, so we could, there are, I think there are other things we could spend the money on tourism-related rather than spend $18,000. Before January. Yeah. Before, before January. January. Yeah. Before, before January, January. Before January, yes. Definitely. Oh, yeah, so, so yeah, okay. There's lots of areas. Like you mentioned a washroom. There's picnic tables, handicapped picnic tables. To me, a handicapped picnic table is something so that someone's in a wheelchair can wheel up to. You don't have to wheel in around this whatever they did down at Eagle's Nest and put two braces here, rip the top of the table off. You do an actual handicapped picnic table. Okay, okay. That's, that's just my opinion. You know, this, this was funds, again, that were collected from the two uh, organizations in our town the motel and the hotel so exactly it's not a, taxpayers money yeah so it wouldn't be taxpayers money it was it was under that tax levy uh, and that was that money would be earmarked for for tourism uh, uh, tourism I'm, development I'm so. sure the hotel which is right across the street here would really like to see to get the money back no they would love to just, get the no money just back. just let me finish they would really like to see the splash pad which you can look out the hotel window if there's people there with small children in the summertime to be able to come over and sit down comfortably and not sit in no shade 80 degrees or 90 degrees and the sun beating down on those little tiny children out there running around that they could go in under shelter and change a baby's diaper do whatever had to be done to me that would be a tourist attraction but then again maybe I'm thinking I'm, an, I'm from the old school, maybe. I don't know what yes. I'm talking about. Yes. Um, um, yeah, okay, so I guess uh, we can actually, um, uh, for the time capsule, do you see anything that they're being done with the time capsule? I say, okay, get a piece of granite, set it out there, drill a hole in it, get your cylinder, put the names of all the mayors from 1904 to 2022, put it in there, put a picture of the seal, the logo, and Betty. any any other Betty. thing and put it down in there, put the top over it, yes. put a little thing on. Cement monuments in St. Stephen go up the graveyard all the time and, and they work on granite. I'm sure they would come down and do something out here for us. That's not going to cost us $18,000, not even going to cost us 6000 Yeah, okay, I time capsule is a great idea, but tone her down a bit here and why don't we call cement monuments in St. Stephen and say what would it cost you to uh, engrave on a piece of granite. I mean, granite's granite. I mean, all the tombstones in the graveyard are made of granite, aren't they? I don't know. I'm not up there yet. Not going yet for a while. Listen, uh, we're, we're in a similar in a similar meeting uh, uh, in Penfield uh, in Penfield for three of these things. Uh, how much was the, the the thing per per per? They want to have three. For the Pen Penfield Air Base Memorial. I yes. think they're they're budgeting in around two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's about uh, eighty thousand dollars per pair of this. Per Correct. Of this. Yeah. So it's about eighty thousand dollars for a granite uh, monument. Oh, good granite. Lord, man! There's granite all around this well, place. We uh, just have to get a contractor to go and get a stone. Yeah, the people went through the process. But anyway, just 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 to actually understand that if we want to actually, if we want to get a plastic thing and put our names there and then bury it, we can probably do it for a thousand bucks. Well, but, it wouldn't but, have to be plastic. I mean, you could get well, an aluminum cylinder. Yeah. Somebody somewhere must have some kind of a cylinder. But anyway, so no. we have, we have anyway. Get, okay, so basically, okay, from what I understand here, um, uh, there is no traction for, for a granite monument. Not a monument at $18,000, no. no. Yeah. Okay, so, so um, uh, we move it on, and if there is anything about time capsule uh, in the next uh, weeks or so, we can actually bring it up. Or otherwise, you can die quietly, death, and uh, 
We'll try to find something that's a little bit more palatable for our financially responsible. How's that? Yeah, but I still believe the diapers thing for the hotel would not be an appropriate thing so to what do. What you say, sir? The diaper changing thing uh, over over by the shade. Yeah. Well, it's not, a, I, not exactly I use that a as a thing. small example, but I mean, a shade for yeah. small children. People like myself, I can't sit out in the shade. I don't want this beautiful skin yeah. to get wrinkled. Okay, um, we move on to, um, so we don't have anything, anything to actually do on that one. Um, we spent some money, 500 bucks or so, but uh, it was all for good use. Um, all business. Letter for Mr. Alan Holmes, use of the town, St. George logo. Jason. Uh, yes, Your Worship. So this is something that uh, we've had um, under old business for a couple of meetings now. So this is just a request uh, by Mr. Holmes to use the town logo, which, as we see, is the town logo that's on our, our bylaws. As, um, so we'll be using that logo um, for him to uh, create t-shirts that he could um, uh, put on other material and, and perhaps uh, and I guess he'd, he'd want to be responsible with uh, reproducing that logo um, uh, he's also recommended that we perhaps go and buy coffee mugs and chains and stickers and and things like that we typically don't buy material like that to sell we're not in the business of um, selling t-shirts or anything like that so um, typically as well, I think we've talked about this before, um, the town logo is, is, is used by the town. Uh, it's on the side of our trucks, it's on our letterhead, it's on our bylaws. Um, freely letting anyone use that town logo either now or once we're part of Entity 53. Uh, even more importantly under Entity 53, we do not want to have a point where we have people using the town logo um, for the town of St. George and having residents confused that the town of St. George still exists and Eastern Charlotte is some other type of government. So uh, that's why I certainly don't recommend anyone using the town logo. We have it pretty well maintained. People do email us for different promotions. Uh, you know, Chris uh, keeps a, a pretty good record of who's using the town logo and where the permissions have been given. And um, we actually even have a bit of a, a protocol with colors and, uh, and times and we use those. So. Um, so I know that you know Mr. Holmes has been has been waiting for us to make a decision, but um, you know, certainly he can you know say St. George. I uh, can take a picture of the falls uh, um, and put those on T-shirts and stuff. But the actual logo or the seal that we have uh, with uh, St. George and the dragon, um, those are certainly identifiers of our municipality. Uh, we're supposed to hear from, from uh, the regulations and have a, a definite uh, answer on that one. Have there been any regulations issued about uh, whether or not uh, what you are describing is going to be the situation after January 1st? We've raised it with the province uh, with many things. It goes onto a radar to be looked at. Yes. Um, we know that you know, documents, agreements, assets, buildings, vehicles are all moving uh, from St. George to Eastern Charlotte. Um, so we don't see any anything otherwise that would say that the icons, um, the logos of either Village of Black Arbor or the town of St. George would move as well. Um, those still would be, again, on active bylaws. Um, you know, bylaws such as the municipal plan that we passed today will still be active in January. Um, so those will still will be symbols of, of the local government. Um, Eastern Charlotte um, will have We'll still be we'll be active with both uh, by the bylaws of the village of Black Harbor and and uh, in the town of St. George. I personally say no. It's a logo. There's lots of other things that signify St. George. The falls. I mean, that's appeared in National Geographic. The picture of the falls, which everybody knows, it's the town of St. George. This this one right here, and like you said, the dragon, St. George the dragon, but. For the town logo, my personal opinion is no. Uh, you are talking about as a logo, not the town of St. George, but essentially the houses and the river, right? Uh, no, I say no to this right here. Yeah. And I mean, if you want to put something on T-shirts or cups sure. or whatever, yeah. you could do that because that's not. So, for example, town of St. George, a community strong. Do you have a do you have a, a, a trade a trade name mark on the community strong, uh, Jason? 
On the community strong? Yeah. No, we don't have a trademark on the statement. Okay, no. so essentially if, 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 uh, if, uh, if um, Mr. Holmes wants to actually print uh, uh, T-shirts, Town of St. George, a community strong, and put some sort of a depiction of St. George, um, is there any, anything that can keep him from doing it? No, as long as it would be, you know, we wouldn't get into a situation that he's, you know, someone's trying to exhibit that they are a form of local government. Or, yeah, no, I, that, that, that I understand. But, right. you know, if, if somebody flies the Confederation flag on his truck, uh, nobody's going to say that he's the sheriff of Alabama, right? I mean, let's be realistic here. I mean, that, that's, right. that's uh, right. I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, so, I mean, I, I, there'll be no issues if he uses something like a statement like, you know, uh, community strong, fine, that's fine. Yeah. But the actual logo, the colors, how it's situated is, is, is a logo. And Can we put this thing, this question to the, to the province and ask, ask no, for, for a direct? No, we did not. <laughs> no, we did not. We, we did with the lawyer and, uh, you know, her statements, just as I've said, uh, you know, again, uh, whether we're trying to look for a fine line to allow him to use our logo, I don't know. Again, it's not my recommendation to council that we approve this. Simply looking ahead to Eastern Charlotte, I don't want to have to contend with somebody using the town logo and writing letters to the council of that day. Um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't try to set up that council with that type of position. Can, can we just put this to a vote? Because we can discuss this all night. We'd have to, we'd have to vote it out of, correct, out of, out of where it's tabled, so. Yeah. So how do we finish this off right now? Because we've been on it now 10 minutes and we're still nowhere. Well, we spent 10 minutes for the diapers. I mean, we can actually discuss something here that, that Not actually... The diapers. No, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, uh, the, 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 the... Motion to decline. I'll make a motion to decline this. To decline. This okay, so we have a motion to decline it. And I second it. I second it. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, Mr. Armstrong. Sorry. So um, we have a motion to decline the, the, the letter of Mr. Alan Holmes, and uh, we have has been seconded. And uh, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Anyone against it? Well, there is one vote. Uh, um, okay, next one is uh, the proposed subdivision on Mount, on Mount Pleasant Road, 112 uh, lot uh, PID 1518 for small residential subdivision. Um, Jason. Thank you, Worship. So this is um, what we refer to sometimes as the Avery proposal. So this will be for the uh, lot on Mount Pleasant. Uh, certainly, as of right now, with the current sitting zoning bylaw, we would have to make an amendment to this current zoning bylaw. Uh, whereas Council has now in their possession a draft of the new new, new zoning bylaw, uh, and is you know, we're, we're looking at a meeting as soon as uh, next week on, on discussions of that. I certainly would make the recommendation that we don't uh, bring this forward this month. Uh, just considering that uh, we, we could be looking at a new zoning bylaw, perhaps by the end of uh, end of October, first uh, of November. So you're suggesting we table it again until we have the zoning bylaw. Correct. Yes. <coughs> Can I ask you what what we had uh, for the council was not um, the zoning was the one about the municipal plan. So essentially, we are in a position right now to actually make a decision about the change to municipal plan to accommodate Mr. Avery. We passed the new municipal we plan. We just passed the municipal so plan. So we are in a position to tell Mr. Avery, Mr. Avery, you have a proposal that goes against our municipal plan, and, you still, and you still can do your three houses that you want within the existing municipal plan. And give him that feedback. We, we, we are in a position to do that so I don't, now. I don't, I don't believe that this goes against the, the current municipal plan that was passed here tonight. So it would now we're looking at a zoning item. So this is now a zoning item. We'd have to do amendment to the zoning plan. But um, we first have to, to to amend the municipal plan before we allow Mr. Avery. So to yeah, we don't have to amend the most the municipal plan now. Do you want to uh, bring that in, Alex? So I've, um, if I may, Your Worship. So. Um, with regard to Mr. Avery's proposal, um, what uh, um, uh, CEO is saying is uh, correct. It, it's uh, now that you've gone ahead all the way through uh, with your municipal plan, you really need to put his proposal on hold or defeat it. Uh, that would be your options. Um, 
because uh, his, his proposal would be to amend the old municipal plan to do what um, to do what he was setting it up to do. Now, with regard to uh, what uh, Jason was saying with the current municipal plan, would you have to amend it to accommodate his request? Uh, no, if the request was done in a different way. Uh, but because the zoning bylaw may change, it also creates another uncertainty for him and his proposal. He's, he's applied to amend the former municipal plan and the current zoning bylaw, which may or may not be in existence in se several months if council proceeds with the document you have in your desk. So it leads a lot of, um, it, it leads a lot of uncertainty as to what would happen with his proposal. Um, if you go to, to adopt it and then you adopt this document, you might wipe out his rezoning. So um, council has to think about this and if, you, if you're in a position to say no, uh, you can defeat his request or you can table it till you decide what to do with this zoning bylaw. What would hap what he'd have to do is one of two things if he was gonna come back to, to uh, uh, have his proposal be considered by council. It would be if this zoning bylaw is passed, he'd have to look at taking that property out of the agricultural zone and put in part of that property that he wants to subdivide into a rural settlement zone, which has uh, uh, certain lot size criteria. So that would be something to look at for council if you're thinking about to continue to entertain this proposal he's made. Um, but he hasn't, he hasn't adjusted his request at all. So this is all um, uh, basically conjecture uh, from me to say what he might do. Um, because it's his application and if he wants to change it, it's up to him. Um, so what you guys do with uh, your bylaw uh, if you're proceeding with your uh, zoning bylaw, his proposal will have to wait. Um, and regardless, uh, you, you've uh, gone ahead with your municipal plan. So his municipal plan amendment basically uh, is null and void at this point. So uh, his res the rezoning part of his request would have to be changed if he was going to, if council is going to continue to entertain it. Alex, can I have some plain language answer sure. here? Um, in order to actually change um, a land zoning mm -hmm. which uh, contradicts or is contrary to an existing municipal plan, you first make a, a step to amend the municipal plan. That would be right, yep. And after you amend the municipal plan, yep. uh, you make a second proposal to amend the zoning. Yeah. Okay, so my question is, at any particular time, whether, whether before seven o'clock today or after seven o'clock today, we are now almost eight, almost nine o'clock, uh, this town had a municipal plan. Yep. And what this gentleman is proposing is against that municipal plan. It yeah, requires a variance. Yeah. So are we in a position now to tell Mr. Avery that this town would have liked to actually not take farmland out of the existing municipal plan and he should consider getting his three houses that he wants for that property within the existing municipal plan zoning. Yeah, and it's up to council to make that determination. Correct. So you just said the municipal plan that you adopted tonight doesn't allow for what he proposed. Yes. Uh, and you can make that statement. You could also look at there's a section of the municipal plan which would allow for uh, minor changes within those designation areas that doesn't require you to amend the municipal plan. So if you consider it minor, then then you could approve a rezoning without going back to the municipal plan and changing it. But you'd have to make that decision. No, I'm saying I'm, we are asking the expert to tell yeah. us if changing the zoning that is prescribed for that land mm -hmm. from uh, rural agriculture to um, residential mm -hmm. by adding two lots and then a pathway to the back, if that is a change in the municipal plan that we actually approved. It, I would say it depends. You'd look at what no. he's proposing. If it's multiple lots, if it's taking up the whole of the entirety of the parcel, I would agree. I wouldn't do it and say you, if he's going to do multiple lots and uh, take up the entirety of that parcel, then he's looking at amending the municipal plan. If it's just a small corner, it's a decision you would have to make, but it may be acceptable. That would be what I would say. Um, my question to you again. Yeah. And I like, like, like uh, uh, we can, uh, it, may, it may take a few minutes to actually, to actually understand that. Um, is there any step where the council can 
go back to Mr. Avery and say, Mr. Avery, you came to our town, you invested your money to buy this lot, and you want to actually build three houses there. You can do that with the existing municipal plan that we just voted, that mm -hmm. we want to not take farmland out of farm use and still have three homes. So is that, is that, is that something that, that the, 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 the reason for which we vote a municipal plan is supposed to do, to actually tell the, the proponent that we do have a municipal plan with a certain zoning, and you can do what you want within the existing zoning. Well, it, I mean, there's a lot in that question. <laughs> it's hard to take. Well, I'm trying to get an answer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm, 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 um, I ask a direct question, mm, and I try to get a direct answer. Yeah. I get a complicated question, so I'm so, asking another complicated question. I'll try my best. It is, it is complicated. That's the problem. Um, so if I understand your question correct, you would say it, it, the municipal plan is, as you understand it, the one you adopted tonight would allow him to do three homes, or you don't agree with that? Well, I absolutely agree. He can do three homes there. Okay. But if he can do the thing while respecting a municipal plan that we just gotcha. voted, or the same municipal plan that was existing before we voted. Gotcha. Yep. I I think it's possible. I think you could do it, um, but again, it would be how how much of that lot would be taken up by um, the you know a rural residential component that's not agricultural, and I think if it was limited and very small, um, then, then, you, then you stay true to that policy of not allowing an intrusion of residential development into, a, into an agricultural area. So that would be the thought, yeah. I go back to the zoning bylaw that you just proposed that mm -hmm. says, you know, that you shall not have manure smelling next to a house, in a residential house. You can have manure smelling next to a rural house, agriculture, because everybody expects to have a cow next to him. Right? Yeah. Okay, so all I'm saying is, is there a step for us to actually try to respect the municipal bylaw that we just voted? Well, and, you know, this is a good question. Um, so when it comes to the agricultural requirements around livestock and making sure that, um, you know, that the smells related to having livestock aren't causing uh, significant nuisance to nearby homes, this is a question which we'll probably address in the workshop. Um, and one which um, we can you can look at council it's council's bylaw and you can amend it however you wish. So, if you're concerned that having that rule related to um, smells and and livestock is too prohibitive to do agriculture and does not respect the municipal plan, then you can amend it. You can take it out. The reason it would be in there is because well, yes, we can do agricultural development in St. George. Um, it is also still fairly close to a built up area. And I wouldn't necessarily just rip the bandaid off of all rules and regulations when it comes to having farms in, in the town and uh, the built up area, because you are going to have, you, you do have houses even down Mount Pleasant Street. You do currently. And uh, we, don't have any, we don't have any significant livestock operations. When we're talking about um, significant like a hog barn, that could be a problem if it's located there. Um, having some farm animals and certainly having some pigs, probably okay. And it's just making sure that the number is not going to be overwhelming and cause, you know, a big part of uh, the community to, uh, to have this very noxious smell. So I think that the thing is you've got to make a decision of count as council. Do you want to really, really encourage a, a really intense agricultural zone right in the community, or do you want to have the allowance for farm animals, but have some pretty, you know, strong boundaries around how intense it gets? So it's a question you have to answer. And uh, right now, the... I don't know if Raymond Hall is there. He's not there. If he wants to actually put up a, a pig farm there, he's entitled to do it, right? Well. It, yes, but you'd have Not to... Not but. Yeah, right now, he's entitled to do it. You'd have to look at what the, the zoning bylaw would say. Correct. And if the zoning bylaw has no rules or regulations on it, it doesn't just end there. If the, live, if the Livestock Operation meets the threshold of the Livestock Operations Act, then you're looking at licensing through that act. So it's not just zoning. Your zoning is your local rules that may go above and beyond the Livestock Operations Act. Um, and the Livestock Operations Act definitely contemplating a very rural location, not within 
the town of St. George boundaries. So generally speaking, your setback for Livestock Operations Act is like, it's could be up to 200, could be in the extreme 600 meters from a residential dwelling. So uh, what this is trying to do is say, in, the, in that area underneath the livestock operations license, so it's these very small farms that don't need the license, yes. how do we regulate that? Let me reverse the question. Is there any problem from us now telling to Mr. Avery or to Charlie um, that um, uh, Mr. Charlie, uh, can you accommodate your plan within the existing planning zone? Because we do not have any reason for why you want this thing. Like this is a fair question to ask Mr. Charlie, right? Yeah, so with the current zone, the AR, you can do, um, you can do lots, uh, one acre size, uh, but I think in this case, he wouldn't have the frontage under the current zoning requirements to, to, uh, to have separate lots. So if he's gonna do, um, if it was two lots plus the remnant, um, he would have to get a variance on one of those lot widths. Three lots. So three lots. Three lots. Yeah, that's just the terminology. So it'd yes, be, three uh, lots. So, uh, yeah, three lots, one like he of proposes, which would be He the proposes remnant. three lots. Yeah. He proposes three lots. Yep. He proposes three lots, and he can have these three lots within the existing municipal plan. What, what he's proposing is not just three lots. It's, there is a configuration that he's proposing with frontage on Mount Pleasant. For so, three lots. Yeah. For three lots. For with three two, lots. With, with two houses, uh, with two house lots having frontage on Mount Pleasant. That's, that is his proposal. The third lot has a frontage on Mount Pleasant also, right? Like, again, that is his proposal. It's not... Yes, it's yes. So all I'm saying is he has three lots fronting Mount Pleasant. He can have this, this plan within the existing municipal plan. Uh, we, can, we can actually say you can have it, right? This, like this is, this is the natural thing to do. I don't know why we are discussing why we are discussing tabling something which is black and white. I mean, we had a municipal plan, we just put a new municipal plan, and we say we have to, we, we would like to encourage keeping this thing agricultural. And all of a sudden, Mr. Uh, uh, Charlie comes and says, I want to put three lots there. And we say, yes, Mr. Charlie, by all means, put these three lots, you're allowed to do it. Why are you asking us to put residential lots there? So I can have the people there complaining that it smells. But they, because they have the right, they bought, they bought a residential lot and it smells, and they don't like that. I mean, my rooster, yeah. they can hear it there. My yeah. rooster, they can hear it there. And if you look at your municipal plan, he should be silent. My rooster should be silent because everybody is entitled to have quiet at night, right? So all I'm saying is why we are tabling it? Uh, and I don't get an answer from you. And I'm, 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 I'm starting repeating myself. Why you cannot sell to Mr. Charlie that what you're proposing can be accommodated with what, you, what, what we just passed? Well, yeah, and what, what he proposed was a zone that was under, that's under your current zoning bylaw, um, which if you look at the municipal plan, what would work in that municipal plan that you just passed would be the RS zone, not the zone he proposed. So you have a bylaw with the zone that, that's in your current zoning, uh, but it's a, it's a residential style zone. The one which I might suggest a council could work is the rural residential zone, the rural settlement zone, the RS zone, but he has not asked for that. That would work under municipal plan without amending your municipal plan, but he has not asked for that. So that's why I'm suggesting you but move. We, we, yeah. we are in a position to tell him that you can do that. Yep, And certainly. the second thing that I want to ask you is we are three months away from being part of a larger entity, yep. okay? Have we have an obligation, moral and legal, to actually go to the other entity and ask them, do you really want to have residential lots within an, a, a, a rural zoning? Because they do have a municipal plan too, right? So you're talking about the next door LSD? The, the Fundy Bay, yes. The Fundy Bay? Yes. Yeah. So your, your question is, to ask them what they would like no, to I'm do? No, I'm saying right now, yep. we have a municipal plan that we can actually adhere to. And the next, the next, the neighbor has also a municipal plan in the works, yep. which also contemplates to keep the thing a rural. Well, on their side. On their side, Yeah. yes. Yeah. So everybody seems to believe that this area should be staying rural. Yes. Okay, so why we don't say this is what is, this is yeah. what it is. You know, Mr. It is Ma what it is. It yeah. is what it is. Why would not say that thing to Mr. Yeah. Charlie? 
Yep, and Mr. Mayor, I agree. That's what I, I, I maybe we are having a miscommunication with each other because what I'm saying is that the zone that would work under the your current your new municipal plan is a different zone than what he's requested. He had requested one that would have made sense with the municipal plan amendment, but things have changed just tonight. So it's a bit confusing, but I don't for see the confusion. I I maybe I don't maybe the I'm the one who's having a hard time. And, here. And, and, and the other thing which I mean we can go back to which proposal he put because yeah. he changed the proposal. But all the proposals we yeah. all the proposals require one thing to change our municipal plan, which we had before, we have it now, yeah. and says no. So why we don't say it is what it is? Because you're okay, so the current the current zoning bylaw, which you have and which he's zoned in, is called AR. And you can do these number of uh, these houses in the AR zone. You don't necessarily have to have a farm. You can have agriculture. You can have houses. And so as we talked about, he can currently in the AR do large lots, one acre, 54 meters of frontage. Yes. And that would be allowed. But he wouldn't have enough frontage to do what he wanted to do under the current zoning rules. Okay. So with the potentially new zoning rules, he could have, he could look at the RS zone, which allows for smaller lots that connect to sewer and water. It's still rural in, it's still a rural zone. Yeah. So that's the difference. Well, look, okay, yeah. thank you, thank you. I just okay. want to, I'm going to ask the councillors. So, um, I understand that all the councillors went and they actually talked to the people who are affected. And everybody, everybody now knows where we are, and they had a chat with uh, with neighbors on both sides, and they know wh where they are and what they are concerned about. So uh, the question, the question that we have right now, uh, it, it, we have to take our responsibilities and say, are we going to say to Mr. Mr. Avery, Mr. Avery, what you propose is not okay, and come back with a different one, or are we going to say, oh, we are not ready to discuss it yet? So I'm, 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 I'm going to put a proposal, I'm going to ask for a motion to actually tell to Mr. Avery that this one here is unacceptable for the time being. He can come back. I mean, he can always come back. Um, so I, 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 uh, I want to ask if anybody would propose a motion to actually uh, tell to Mr. Avery uh, uh, what he has proposed is not according to municipal plan and he can go back and put a new proposal. So. Uh, any motion for that? I'll make that motion. This is for him to, uh, this is us rejecting it. Rejecting it, yes. And it gives him the option to reapply. Correct. Yeah. Yes, yes. For that we are, with something that we can accommodate, yes. I'll second that. Okay, so we'll have a, we'll have a motion and, uh, any questions about this? Uh, of all the people so who have actually- rejecting the original yes. motion or the yes. one that just came forward? Uh, the second one. I was under the impression that- Is the first one superseded by the second one? Yeah. That's a very good That's question, Councilor Rubin. That's a good question, because that was, my, uh, that was actually that why was we had this conversation question, online. Yeah. That, that, because I don't yeah. understand, I don't understand when we know that, yeah. we know what has happened, we know what we have voted, and we have an opportunity to tell Mr. 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 Avery whether it's the first plan or the second plan, you don't meet the municipal plan that we just voted. Can you please go back and make another proposal? And maybe he can actually come back and tell us why he wants that. Why he wants that, that, that thing to go on the back and keep that, that, that land for the next step. Everybody has talked to the, to the, to the, to the owners around and they, he knows. So it's time to take our responsibilities. And, 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 and I, I will have a motion has been seconded and ask if there is any question. So the question is, is the first plan or the second plan? That's a very good question because we had people who came to, a, to, the, to the first plan who had an open house and now it has changed. But regardless of what it is, the question is, can we tell to Mr. Avery, take this thing now and think about coming up with a different proposal, whether it's the first or the second? The question would be whether we are currently on the first proposal or the second. It, the second proposal supersedes the first. He's allowed to change his proposal up to the point of council making a decision on it or putting it to a first reading or second reading. So as of right now, it would be the second proposal that he's adjusted the, the lot sizes, they're the larger lot, lot sizes. So that is the proposal that we have. He's adjusted it by four by his drawings, but he hasn't adjusted it by his application. In the, in the his application is still asking for the four, for the four separate lots. No. Yes, it is, it's right here. 
So the application, he did uh, ask for the, um, to amend his application to that. So what you see is the amended version of his application. So that is what he's communicated. Now, yeah, he could have maybe resubmitted the form and that might have been clear and yeah, I see what you're saying too. Well, yeah, when you read it, it still says yeah. four. It yeah. doesn't say any, it doesn't say that it's changed, his picture's changed, but that's all. Right. Yeah, which case, what I would, uh, what I would suggest, if we were going down the road of, uh, of actually considering for approval or not, would be to put terms and conditions on what is actually being approved, and it would just be the, uh, what, what uh, he's indicated to you in the image, not. Why are doing all these complicated dances? I'm just wondering. I mean, it's yeah, too complicated. I, yeah. I'm, 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 I do. I, do, I should like, apologize. You know, I, I never heard yeah. a citizen coming to a, to a government and the government yeah. dancing around him. I'm dancing him around to actually say, please, I'm going to yeah. do what you, you, how to can help you. You know, I never seen this kind of things happening. It's very regular. Yeah. It's no, very regular. Your for, Worship, I, I do think I should apologize. I think um, what, what happened here was, uh, uh, the worst possible time to apply f to amend the municipal plan and zoning bylaw because council was considering adopting a brand new document for both. So in addition to that, uh, given that the proposal was very controversial um, in nature and he then amended his request, it then led to a lot of different confusion. And I think uh, given the state of this, it's not ready to be brought for just as the clerk said so there is an option to actually clear the board clear you can clear, clear the, board. the board and yes, say mr Everett, certainly. thank you very much for investing yeah. in st george uh, yeah exactly uh, yeah. that would be that would be the, it's just unfortunately just a very confusing time to do yes, this yes um and uh, you know people are uh, are we're asking about rezonings and at, at this point i'm saying you really kind of need to put a pause on until council's had a chance to consider its new zoning bylaw and uh, we, we can, you know, I think it's going to be something you need to do in the next year, given the limited time also council has. So people have been, you know, they, there's always ideas floating around there. So I, I've suggested we really got to put a, a, a freeze on rezonings for the time being, just because it is too confusing to do right in the and midst of the, clear the board, yeah. We can clear the board so we don't have one more thing, you know, together with our, you know, the... You, that, that is an option to you, and it's yeah. it's really yeah. council's decision so what you want to yeah, do. Okay, so, yeah. so we have a motion, we have a motion which has been seconded about clearing the board. And... and one more question. And, no. I so said we have a, we have, so we have a question. Yeah, go ahead, please. please. This document yeah. has to be done first. The rezoning. Yes, because no, okay. because it just you makes it more confusing. That's all. <laughs> that's all. Exactly, yeah. and I do apologize for that. I think it's it's, okay. uh, it's very difficult to con convey this because you're talking about multiple processes on top of each other. So what you're saying then to us is that we should look at this before we really yes. deal with this. Because you've adopted because a new municipal plan. Yeah, he could contradict you exactly. Which goes back to the suggestion. Did you? Said to Jason earlier, okay, maybe we should table that until we approve that. And I know we got tabled last time, and I'm not trying to put it off. I'm just saying that the way I listen to this, it sounds like we should table this until we approve that. I'm sorry. We are still at the municipal plan level. We are still at the municipal plan level. We can have approve it under municipal plan and then reject the zoning, right? Like what we approve as a municipal plan. Okay, we can approve it and they say on the zoning, this is not really minor, it's, it's, it's major, we have yeah. to go back. Okay? Yeah, if, yeah, so yeah. all I'm saying is, right now we have the municipal plan, yep. okay? And, and, and the issue of whether or not we're gonna amend the zoning by law or not in the life of this council is, is, is almost irrelevant. We have a municipal plan that we just voted and we have the basis to actually make a decision. Yes. Based on what we have right now voted and the existing zoning by law that the town still has. Like, would you not all of, all of a sudden became zoneless because we have not voted the amendment. That's right. We That's do have correct. an existing zoning yep. by law. So potentially today, we could have actually approved and say, yes, Mr. Avery, by all means, go ahead. And you have a zoning by law, I'm gonna put another hearing according to the zoning by law until we get a new zoning by law. So the, all these things about the zoning by law being an issue are red herrings in my book. I, I, don't, I don't agree, uh, but... <laughs> I'm not sure if we're going to be getting any more clarity tonight. It's a very complicated matter, but 
how do I summarize like this clarity. easily? I like yeah. clarity. That's a very good word. Yeah. And yeah. I like clarity, yes. Um, the MISPL plan, what, I agreed with you in this point. The MISPL plan does give you direction. So the one, you're, uh, the one you approved tonight, you can use to base your decision on. So if you feel that what he proposed wouldn't comply with the MISPL plan that you adopted tonight, you can make your decision on that basis, and that would be appropriate and fine. And this is what the two motions are, the, the one that we yes. just seconded. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So if that's where council wants to leave it, and you, you can, and that would be appropriate. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, we have a motion that has been seconded about, um, about telling Mr. Avery that his proposal uh, is being rejected and, and, uh, and sent him back a letter thanking him for the proposal and explaining to him what he, I'm not sure if, did he, I'm not sure if we spend the time to educate him about what he can do, frankly. You know, I don't, he's a, he, the guy came from Ontario, he does not really know that he, maybe he can do what, what he wants to do with the existing municipal plan. There is, there is an opportunity to educate him in, in, our, in our decision to tell him that what he proposes is not acceptable. So, um, um, yeah. What happens if we, for example, table it? Does it die when the council's dissolved? Yes. Uh, it stops, doesn't it? Yep. To start the same, start all over. He'd have to reapply. Basically. Or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yes. With this new adoption or whatever we have. Wow, something clear. Huh? Yeah, so, so we want to actually delay it until we die, so that we die with it. Yeah, we're, we're going fast. Or we can actually, or we can actually have a clear, a clear thing and we say, hey, this thing does not do what this town wants. We want to actually try to respect the municipal plan that we just voted. It's not too radical. I either think you either vote on it, yeah. and you, no, there's no explanation. Yeah, correct. One or the other. Yes, and this is what they propose. We have a motion to vote. We have a motion to vote, right? Correct? Yes. 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 The motion is to reject. Yes. The motion is to vote and the proposal as is is to action is not acceptable. Yes. Now that's the motion. No, it was to reject. No, the motion was to reject. reject. The motion when you to don't reject. accept the proposal, you reject the proposal. That's this right. is what the Fisor said. You can speak you don't have to raise your voice and scream. Oh, I forgot your 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 So, um, can you please read us the motion, uh, um, Jason? So, so the motion I... uh, made by Council Diderakis and uh, seconded by Councillor Armstrong was to reject the uh, so-called Avery proposal as it is. Uh, I, I, am I allowed to actually change the word to say not reject but not no. approve? It would only be the person who pooped him to put the motion. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying that. Do you mean by that not approved? Or you want a rejection or something? I mean, just, just want to understand. Question. My, I, my, I thought that when we get an application, we have to look at it at face value and say whether we approve it or reject it. That's, is, that, that, is that correct? Correct. Uh, actually, the, the, the best way to do this, and based on what I've seen looking at different case law, is to actually have the first reading of the bylaw and then have it fail. So don't give it first reading and it fails. That is your your cleanest route to, to rejecting a proposal like this. Do not give it the source. So put, put it, make a mo someone makes a motion to give first reading to the bylaw to rezone the property um, and you could do the municipal plan amendment bylaw and then do not let it pass. Um, so if you're voting all against it, you just don't let it go forward and it, it, it dies. So if, 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 if we don't do anything today, it dies. So yeah, if you if you fail to give your first reading, because the the thing that was um, was tabled, if I understand, was the actual bylaw itself, right? So the proposal, it was the, the proposal, proposal it was which the proposal. is tied to the proposal, of course. Which was the proposal yeah. was tied to the to the municipal plan. Of course, to the municipal plan. Yeah. So if 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 we if if if, if Councillor Ruben asked me to to actually, um, I guess um, no, it's not time to 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 to, uh, to adjourn yet. But uh, if we don't do anything today, it just dies. So you're, if the, if the motion that was brought back to the table Oh, we put the motion. So let's yeah. put the motion. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to, have to, to actually, uh, because to me, think that there are too many semantics here, and I don't get direct answers or clear answers. They are too convoluted. 
and right now have reject, accept. To me, they are both the same, but, uh, uh, but the, the, the motion is to reject the, the plan as was put. It's a, clear, it's a clear motion. It has been seconded, so let's go from the, the right. I'm, I'm confused. Uh, I'm, uh, so, uh, you're, allowed, yeah, you're allowed to do that. My, I, I just think that if we're going to be looking at zoning, then if, this, if we pass this or don't pass it, then it's just contradicting each other, right? Is that the way I'm understanding that? No. No. So could you... Okay. So we're going to have a meeting to go over this more. Yep. Right? So if we go over this more, and you said before that this would, this would be worked into this, right? Is that the way I'm understanding that? There would be a way to do it, but he has not requested to... to to can go I, to that can zone. we speak plain language what the, this into this means? That's so currently he's requested to go to a residential zone, which is under your current zoning bylaw. He's asking him to change the municipal plan. Is that the first step? <laughs> but uh, with that change, um, that would not work with the municipal plan you just passed tonight. The residential zone does not work. Correct. So what what he could do would be to come back with a, with a different zone, go, come back with a rural settlement zone, which would work under your new municipal plan. What he had proposed worked for the old regime. The, right. the new regime, the new municipal plan, has a different type of zoning that he would need to go under in order for his proposal to be approved, and he hasn't. Well, then there seems no point in voting on it. That's right. So, if we're doing it under the new municipal plan, which came into effect tonight, then why are we voting on it now? Right. Like, uh, when he's the poor main. But we also had the option to vote it for it. When was it? At the last council meeting. Yeah, that, before that, that this we was even on the, the municipal plan. Uh, okay, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. You've got me all confused, John. No, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not actually. Confused. That's, that's why I got the expert here to actually give us plain language and not speak about uh, we're going to change this into this. Uh, there is a, there is a, there are, in my book, there is a municipal plan, which is the governing document. Okay, he let, came me ask, let me ask a question here. This is the old girl that's, her mind please. is just gone. Yeah, please. Okay, right now, we've passed our municipal plan, correct? So we got a new municipal plan. That's number one. The Avery proposal that I saw, and if I'm wrong, somebody here correct me, he is proposing two larger lots at the front of his property and a third lot, which would be where his house is, and the back half of the property still to remain agriculture or hay field or something. Am I correct in no, assuming no. that? He's proposing a change, an amendment to our municipal plan to allow what he wants. Oh, I've saying. lost it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, so. Uh, I just, the, I mean, the, the, the proposal that I looked at said he went to two larger lots. First, he was going to put three across the front, which we all said was too many, correct? Mm -hmm. Then he came back and he said, I'm going to put two larger lots on the front next to the road, and they're going to be, what is it, 90 by 160 or 150. There'll be a driveway. Is that not correct? I don't. No, I, just I think you're out of order. I'm sorry. The question. Okay, I'm out of order. I mean, That's I'm seriously. It. I mean, right now the question is, who had a proposal? Who had a proposal? I'm just trying to understand the proposal. Okay, can you please read us the proposal, uh, uh, Alex? Read us the proposal because there is confusion about what is All the right. proposal that we are voting. It is unfortunately just terribly confusing, and this is why. It, no, no. It's yeah. something like. You know, it, Let it, me just it's summarize. So terribly confusing. I'm so, saying, read us the proposal. A motion on the floor as of right now. Yeah. So I guess the, the, the question that we need to be asked is to, does council support rejecting the proposal? That what is proposal? That's the question that I hear. The proposal from the that is currently tabled by Mr. What's Avery. that proposal? Can you please read us that proposal? <clears throat> you see, we say this proposal in plain language is the one that will help the open house. Proposal is. No, the, it's, a uh, it's a different proposal. Okay.
So the proposal is to subdivide a property into four separate lots, three lots uh, under residential and one lot remaining agriculture rural. That's Thank the you. current uh, application as it is on the application form. Okay, so it was, it was for four lots. The, 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 the proposal that, that we have to actually accept or reject is for four lots. And we have a motion to reject the proposal. So I cannot put more than clearly. We had a proposal for four lots and we have a motion that has been put on the floor to actually vote for or against the proposal. So, uh, Councillor. But he changed it oh. to two. What's the that, is, that is the proposal. Please, the, the CAO that will pay him He's big bucks has told us what the proposal is. Calm yourself down, Your Worship. I am sorry, I am asking a question. And now I'm ugly and I'm upset. This, you gave us this, right? And not this, please, not this. We have a proposal. He just, he just, do you want to read again, please? Because, just be clear. Yes, right. It's right. It's three lots. Can you please read the plain English? Okay, why is it saying so four? This is this council package, yeah. the current application. It's the application that we have. So the wording may not necessarily match. Oh, the wording doesn't match the, the mask now. Councillor wow. Armstrong addressed that earlier. So, once again, the proposal is to subdivide the property into four separate lots, three, lo lo three lots under residential and one lot remaining under agriculture. That is the proposal for the wording. So okay. the vote would be, does councilors support rejecting? So if you are a councilor, you support rejecting that proposal, that's what it should be called. Okay, thank you. So is it clear now that we are voting for what we are voting? I think we are. Um, so the, the, the proposal is to reject the proposal for having four lots in plain language, not this into this, not into this into that, plain language. We had a proposal that was just read for third time and we have to, to actually make a decision. There is a motion on the floor. Councillor Allison. I am not in favor of four lots. No, I am not. No, Councillor Allison, do you approve the proposal or do you reject the proposal? There is a motion. Do you vote for the motion, for or against the motion? I'm against the four lots. So you, you, are, you, so you say you're voting, for, you're voting to reject? For the four lots, yes. Okay, so you are but that's to, not what he, thank you. the next thank proposal uh, Councillor Rubin. Yes, reject. Okay. Uh, Councillor Coulton. Reject. Four lots. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> Councillor Leslie. I reject the four lots. Yeah, Councillor De Torres. I reject the four lots. And Deputy Mayor. Reject, reject the four lots. But that's. Thank you. The 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 proposal has been rejected. Um, thank you. Thank thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Um. Uh, we are moving on to um, correspondence, letter from Mr. David Armstrong regarding uh, road safety. Which date letter is that? Uh, just because I don't have my, my package with me. Do you have what date? Your Worship, this is just a correspondence from Mr. David Armstrong uh, dated August the 20th, uh, 2022. Uh, just in regards to uh, complaints regard as, regarding uh, reckless driving, off-road vehicles on streets, illegal vehicles being driven underage drivers, illegal ag vehicles being driven on non-motorized non walking trails, and excessive loud vehicles causing disturbance. Uh, the correspondence has been distributed. I have to say that I don't understand what Mr. Osborne expects us to do about this. We're not police officers, we're not Department of Safety. Um, we don't stand on the road and dish, dish out speeding tickets. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand this. Um, any other comment? I, I don't understand either. I mean, I think that perhaps, I'm gonna sound terrible when I say this, but I'm gonna say it. Um, the, the situation has been made worse by the constant harping of the speed on Riverview Avenue. I don't know of a town, a village, a city, a rural community that doesn't have a speeding problem. 
I think we've done our due diligence in that we've gone to the RCMP, we've sent forth anything and everything. The RCMP had came down on Riverview Avenue, they interviewed people, uh, other than as Deputy Mayor says, you want us to stand out behind a tree with a radar gun and, and try to find out who's speeding? Uh, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I just think that this constant back and forth that the council's going to have somebody meet with a terrible accident on Riverview Avenue. There's other streets in the town of St. George that have speeding problems. There's other thing, other. I just don't know what that they want us to do. I mean, if the RCMP can't stop them, how is the town councilor and the mayor going to do it? Can that's, I ask that? That's all. That's all. I just don't understand what what Mr. Armstrong wants us to do. Uh, I mean, we've done, we've reported it to the RCMP. We've put up speed signs. What else can we do? I don't think the situation's becoming worse because Armstrong is writing us letters. The situation is. No, I, I, I don't disagree with you that it's becoming worse. I'm just saying, what can we do? Because this is the letter, August the 20th. We got another letter today, or September the 12th. We have a, another letter from Mr. Armstrong saying to Mayor and Council, and by the way, I didn't get that letter. I was sent to it by the CAO, so I guess I suddenly dropped off the face of the earth as a councillor. But I'm just saying, yes, I understand his concerns. And I wouldn't want to see anybody get hit on Riverview Avenue, but what more can we do? We've, we've sent it to the RCMP. Councillor Armstrong has said, you know, like the RCMP should be more present on Riverview Avenue. What does the man want us to do? Can you tell us? Jason, can I ask you, this letter is the one with the knocking with me. This one, this, this, oh, this is the one, did you see? This letter goes to more, more things because she talks about what's happening at the <laughs> Adventure Center, yeah. right? Yeah. She talks about yeah. the Adventure Center. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of lists here. I mean, speeding is one thing. Mm -hmm. but there are, yeah. So what, yeah, what, no, what, what, what I would suggest, I that, like, what, what I would suggest because uh, some, uh, like he, he brings in other issues more than the speeding. He brings about uh, the Day Adventure Center, which I heard several complaints about what's happening there uh, at night. Um, and uh, maybe there is a, an opportunity to actually sit down with him and uh, understand where he's going, uh, what, 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 what he expects us to do, because that letter brings, yeah, yeah it's different. It's not the speeding only. No, no, I didn't get that letter is what okay. I'm trying to yeah. tell you today. Yeah. It wasn't sent to me. The CAO handed it to me just before the meeting or sent me an email and I read it. Yes, there are other things besides speeding. There's uh, noise and, and there's down at the Day Adventure Center. But what well, more... None of which we have any control of. Yeah, what more can we do? I mean, we're not police officers. We're... I mean, we've, we've sent it to the police. Is there something else that we're missing as a council? Maybe somebody from the audience can tell us what we're missing. No, no, I mean, what I would suggest, because some of them, there are, there are issues which are municipal, like, you know, I mean, the day adventure center and what's happening there. I mean, uh, so maybe we should have a chat with him and tell him what, what, what we can do, I mean, uh, and what he thinks that we are missing. I mean, I, I don't know what he, he believes, that how we can enforce what's happening there at uh, 10 o'clock at night, for example. Uh, there, are, there, there are complaints. Many people are oh, complaining about the, the, noise and, the noise and drugs and all that. But, but uh, what can we do if we send it to the RCMP? We're not ourselves. We can't go out and do anything. I mean, is there a suggestion? Well, I think that there's a lot of questions that council has uh, for Mr. Armstrong. Uh, he has raised some of his concerns. So I think matching his concerns with some questions, uh, as the mayor is. Uh, is, is that looking for is perhaps setting up a meeting with Mr. Armstrong with council to, to review his concerns and maybe perhaps address some of the municipal points in these. I think that's a good idea. Plus, you just sit with him and because yeah, I don't have know what more we can do with no, the we aren't paying I mean, attention to. I mean, we, we engage with uh, local residents and other things, so it's you know, we can actually meet him and see what he thinks that we should be doing that we are missing. Uh, so, so Jason, can you please, uh, I mean, yeah, we can um, set up a meeting, I mean, and, and uh, I will attend. Uh, no. Everybody can attend. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's just, we just don't know what else we can do. Uh, okay, um, 
We have a letter from Miss Lisa McKay regarding proposed by law. I think that's obsolete now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and we have public presentations and appearances. Um, members of the public. No one is here. Good. And we have statements of members by council. Wow, it's 10 o'clock. 9.30. Uh, our turn. Yeah. <laughs> Since you listen to a lot of other stuff, now it's our turn. Yeah, that's our awesome. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out to music on Thursday nights. It was well represented. Everyone had a good time. We made over um, almost close to $4,000 for the food bank this year. So I think it was great. Also, Curl for Cancer is going to be taking place on October the 1st. It's the 20th annual walk. It's going to take place at the Day Adventure Center in St. George and Guardian Drugs in St. Stephen. Registration time will be 9 o'clock in the morning. The walk starts at 11, and all the proceeds go to Charlotte County Cancer. If anybody would like any more information, contact Winnie Paul. She would be delighted to give any information out, and I'd like to thank everyone for coming this evening. I'm good. good. I've heard enough. That's good. That's good. Uh, no comments. And, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out this evening, and I'd like to just say that the uh, the new coastal link is is a lovely place to um, have your evening or morning walk. And there's been a lot of activity on there. I've seen children with their rollerblades, skateboards bicycles, um, and so on. So I think that it's going to be quite successful, for sure. Um, maybe just for council to consider with the tax lot, with the um, tours and levy, uh, with the needs for the baseball field, if we could allocate okay. some of those funds. So, yeah. Okay, we can certainly consider it uh, next time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Deputy Mayor. No, I haven't, uh, but I think Brenda needs credit for doing all the music nights. She's the lady that arranged all the music nights. They were a huge success. We may never have music nights again once we don't administer. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure that we knew it is But she deserves, the credit. she deserves all the credit for setting it all up for the year, so she deserves that credit. I'm off some papers. Yeah, but she's the one that gets all the yeah, artists. I'm off some papers. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I just want to actually uh, um, inform everybody that, that we had a meeting with um, with the executive of the Horizon uh, last uh, Friday. Uh, while everybody was partying, we had a meeting here. Jason was here. Uh, and, uh, uh, the mayor of St. Stephen attended. And um, uh, we discussed the situation of uh, primary health care in, in, in our community, the lack of doctors, um, and um, We had, uh, we had an opportunity to actually ask, to, to inform them about some work that as a regional service commission has done. Uh, we had an, a, a committee that uh, looked at their primary health care in, in, in Charlotte County in southwest New Brunswick. So we passed on this information. And um, they told us that there is also another committee that working on, on, on uh, primary health care that we do not know about it officially. So they advise us to actually um, um, get together and form like a Southwest New Brunswick, South, uh, I mean, uh, Charlotte County uh, common front representation and go and have a second meeting. So I'm hoping that something positive can come out of this for, for primary health care. And um, that's all for, 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 for me. Um, and with that, Father, I do. I need a motion. To, well, I mean, we have a, a next regular meeting on October 11th, just so everybody knows. But uh, and a motion to adjourn? Yes. Yeah. <laughs>